Part 2 of Hot Mimosa, Bourbon Street Bad Boys Club, Book 4. Written by Catherine M. Hurst. Narrated by Ava Lucas and Aaron Shedlock. Chapter 12. Dahlia. I woke to my favorite and least favorite sounds. Gunner's laughter and Christmas music. This wasn't just any Christmas music. It was the cheesy kind that my grandparents had listened to. Way too peppy with tones that made it sound like it was played in a tin can. The aroma of fresh-baked cookies made me curious enough to brave the holiday spirit and leave the warm safety of the bed. So far, my day stunk. Heck, the previous 24 hours were a dumpster fire. That baked goods could make me smile gave me hope that things would eventually return to normal. Like I know what that is anymore. I snuck down the hall and gasped at the condition of Leo's living room. Boxes, some empty and some stuffed with decorations, covered the floor, and a short and squat tree stood near the French doors leading to the deck. This has to be Leo's surprise. A perfect golden brown turkey sat on the kitchen island waiting to be carved, and unless I was mistaken, he'd baked my favorite pie. Like the Grinch, my heart swelled three sizes. Unfortunately, it felt like an overinflated balloon, and the reason behind Leo's holiday extravaganza was the needle. I'd made excuses when Leo had asked to spend time with Gunner on Christmas, so he created the holidays here a couple of weeks early. Mama, look, I have a present. Gunner did a happy dance that put Snoopy to shame. Can I open it? I told him he could when you woke. Leo gave me a bashful grin. I thought we could get a head start. I make cookies. Gunner grabbed my hand and dragged me into the kitchen. His expression reminded me so much of his father's, my chest tightened. I swallowed hard and bit my lower lip to keep it from trembling. What kind of cookies? The Santa kind? Poor sugar cookies might have started out in the shape of Saint Nick, but they turned into mounds of red and white icing and silver sprinkles. Those look delicious, he smirked. Leo made yucky ones. Oatmeal raisin were my absolute favorite, but Gunner hated all things grape, including the dried up variety. You two have been busy. I kissed the top of his head and made my way to his father. Slipping my arms around him, I whispered, thank you. You're welcome. Leo's expression softened along with his voice. Do I get a kiss too? I, um. Stepping back, I cursed my stupidity. I'd forgotten all the reasons Leo and I weren't a couple. I'd let the comfort and familiarity lull me into letting my guard down. The problem was, it felt so damned right. Kiss Leo. Gunner clapped his hands. How can I possibly refuse? I brushed my lips across his cheek, but before I could pull away again, Leo's hand snaked beneath my hair and held me in place. What started as a sweet gesture turned into a knee liquefying ravishing that ended with me clinging to him while he dipped me backward. Gunner giggled. Silly mommy. Leo lifted his head, just far enough to wink at our son. Silly indeed. I smiled from my upside down position, but it didn't last long. Until I figured out what my future held, Leo and I needed to keep it on a friends without benefits level. If not for our sakes, then for Gunner's. Leo set me upright. How about that present? Yes. Gunner lunged for the box on the counter. Easy there. Leo reached for it, but it was too late. Whatever was inside leaked through the candy red package. Yuck. Holding his wet hands in front of himself, Gunner screwed up his face. What is that? I braced myself for the oncoming tantrum. It's just water. Leo set the box on the table gently and nodded to the red-faced toddler. 
pull the ribbon and open the box from the top. Gunner snapped his mouth shut, climbed onto a chair and gently untied the bow. With a little assistance from his dad, he lifted the lid and peered inside. His eyes widened and his mouth opened. In ultra slow motion, a smile split his face as he glanced at us and back inside. I'd never seen him react with such awe or dramatics. What is it? Fish! Gunner grabbed for the box again, but this time Leo was ready for him. We have to be careful not to shake his house. He pulled the bowl from the box and set it on the table. A bright yellow goldfish swam in nervous circles around a sprig of plastic leaves. The child nodded without taking his eyes off the fish. You bought him a pet? Never, and I mean never in a million years would I have given a living creature to a toddler. He loves visiting the aquarium, Leo whispered. It was the first thing out of his mouth when I asked what he wanted for Christmas. Thank God he didn't ask for a pony. Watching Gunner stare at the fish eased my irritation a little, but I couldn't shake the feeling this was a very bad idea. Too many things could go wrong, not least of which the fish could die. Remember, don't shake his house. Leo stood. I not. He leaned close and kissed the glass bowl. I seated myself at the table to help keep an eye on the situation. What are you going to name it? Leo. Gunner nodded. Leo Fish. Won't that be confusing, having two Leos? The boy gave me a, you can't be serious, expression that made me wonder what sort of hell I was in for when he hit his teen years. I like it. Walking into the kitchen, Leo smiled like a kid with a golden ticket. Let's eat. Then we have a tree to decorate and stockings to hang. By the time Leo and I put the star on the tree, I needed a second nap, and I wasn't the only one. Gunner had zonked on one of the fluffy dog beds before we'd finished untangling the Christmas lights. Leo fared a little better, but he'd lost some of his enthusiasm while searching for the burnt out bulbs. I'm exhausted. I sank onto the couch and let my head fall back against the soft cushions. Same. Leo plopped down beside me. Do you think he had a good time? You have to ask. It's hard to tell the difference between fun and a sugar high. He laced his fingers with mine. After the kiss he'd laid on me earlier, I wasn't sure how I felt about him holding my hand so casually. Part of me craved the sense of normalcy being with Leo brought. But the wounded little girl inside me was scared he'd hurt me again. As if moving more than his neck was simply too much effort, he rolled his head in my direction. What happened with Harrison today? I told him I didn't want to marry him. Again? The meeting seemed more like days before rather than hours. It was so easy to pretend the rest of the world didn't exist while locked in the condo with Leo and Gunner. Too easy. He didn't take it well? More like he won't take no for an answer. He has some ridiculous idea that I'd make the perfect politician's wife and doesn't care about the minor details, like the fact that I don't love him. He's an idiot. Leo grinned. But I'm happy to hear you're not in love with the schmuck. Biting back a smile, I pulled my hand free to cover my yawn. I'm going to turn in for the night. Thanks again for doing all of this for Gunner. It wasn't just for Gunner. He used his bedroom voice, low and sexy. A little red warning light blinked in the back of my mind. I needed to put some distance between us before I did something I'd regret. Something like run my hand through his silky dark curls, or kiss the five o'clock shadow on his square jaw, or let my fingers do the walking down his happy trail. Leo didn't share my reservations. He cupped my face and moved closer as if to kiss me. But instead, he pressed his brow to mine. Eyes closed, he whispered. Give us a chance, doll. I eased back from him. I want to. 
but I'm scared. I won't hurt you again. He gave me a heartbreaking smile. We're good together. Warmth spread from my chest to my fingers and toes. I had no doubt I loved this man, and I believed he loved me too. But I doubted it was enough. We couldn't go back to the way things were between us. I couldn't spend another ten years hiding my feelings. At the same time, going public had the capacity to hurt people I cared about. I wasn't ready to tell my closest friends I'd lied to them about Leo and Gunner for years. I need time to sort things out. It's been a crazy 24 hours. He nodded and hung his head. Get some sleep. I'll make sure the place is gunner proof. Chapter 13, Leo. As far as Mondays went, this one wasn't bad. It had started with sharing breakfast with the love of my life, our son, and a fish. They had a way of making even the dreaded first day of the week brighter, and I was determined to do whatever it took to keep them under my roof. The first step to making that happen? Taking Harrison fucking Merriweather down. I marched into Marchione Corp and took the elevator to the sixth floor. Something was up with the politician. It was awful convenient that he happened to be in New Orleans the night the stalker had broken into Dahlia's house, and I didn't believe in coincidences. I might not have access to Marco's resources, but I still had a few tricks up my sleeve. I spotted the person I needed to see in a cubicle decorated with sci-fi posters and Star Wars figurines. Julia Carpenter took one look at me, went a little green around the edges, and slumped out of sight. What the hell? The young woman didn't look old enough to drink, but she had a mind that belonged at NASA. I could never figure out why she worked for Marchione Corp, but far be it from me to suggest she belonged elsewhere. Unfortunately, her brilliance didn't include social skills. I walked around the cubicle wall and peered down at her on the floor. Everything okay? Uh, yeah, I, um, lost a contact. It just popped out of my eye. She patted the ground several times before adjusting her glasses and returning to her chair. You wear both? I motioned to the thick black frames on her face. She stared as if I'd addressed her in another language. One is for distance and the other is for up close. What the heck? I didn't have the time or patience to sort out her behavior, so I cut straight to the chase. I need you to do some digging on someone. I want to know everything about him, including his whereabouts last night. Julia's eyes lit. That I can do. I need a name, date of birth, or an approximate age would be helpful. Harrison Merriweather. I had no idea when the guy had been born, but I had a feeling he was older than he looked. Late thirties, maybe. Her mouth fell open. The Harrison Merriweather? Not sure what to make of her response, I nodded. God help us if there were more parents out there who decided to saddle a kid with that horrid name. He's unbelievably attractive, like the perfect specimen of maleness. Her cheeks heated. I mean, he's not Marchione hot, but yeah. Marchione hot? That's new. Biting back a grin, I cleared my throat. See what you can dig up on the perfect specimen. I'll pay you overtime, Julie whispered. Is he in some sort of trouble? That's what I want you to find out. I folded my arms and gave her my best boss stare. I needed her to focus on the facts and not act like some sort of political groupie. She squinted at the monitor while her fingers flew over her keyboard. Harrison Cooper Merriweather, 46. Parents are... 46? He's 17 years older than Dahlia? Are you sure that's the right guy? She motioned me closer to the screen. It's him, but I would have pegged him for 35 at the most. He must have some George Clooney or Keanu Reeves genes. Working to keep my expression from showing my distaste, I said, I'd like to know when he arrived in New Orleans. Where he's staying? I'll check flight records, but he lives in Baton Rouge. Chances are he drove down. She continued to type as she muttered to herself. Traffic cameras, license plate, hotel records. I need the info as you gather it. Julia gave me a quick nod without slowing her fingers or turning her head. One errand down, two to go. I left my family's high-rise office building in the Central Business District and wandered up Charters Street. Normally, I would have used the time to mentally run through my to-do list at the hotel, but I couldn't focus on anything except Dahlia and Gunner and making sure they were safe. With Christmas right around the corner, the French Quarter was decked out with holiday decorations. 
I loved everything about the holidays. Spending time with my family, eating until I burst, and the days and days of traditions. Not to mention the tourists that flocked to the quarter. They were good for business and provided endless entertainment. Case in point, a round man in a Hawaiian shirt, socks, and sandals stood outside my hotel with a video camera. The fashion-challenged gentleman spoke to a blonde that was so far out of his league that I felt sorry for the guy. They turned and stared as I approached, but it wasn't until he raised his camera that I realized they weren't tourists. Freaking paparazzi. Rather than facing them head-on, I ducked into the alley alongside the building and jogged to the service entrance. Flashes of light damn near blinded me and made it next to impossible for me to enter the security code into the keypad. A swarm of reporters emerged from the darkness. Leo, are you and Dahlia Calhoun dating? What does Harrison Merriweather have to say about you kissing his fiancée? Is it true your family is part of the Cosa Nostra? Are you Dahlia's son's father? I ignored them and re-entered the code. Just as the lock clicked open, one of them shouted, What were you doing at Dahlia Saturday night, Mr. Marchioni? I glanced up without thinking, and the cameras clicked away. As if scenting blood in the water, the blonde I'd seen waiting near the front entrance stepped forward and shoved a mini microphone in my face. Leo, why did Dahlia run from her home with her son in her arms? Was she meeting you? I knew better than to answer, but I couldn't stand there and allow them to paint Dahlia with a giant blood red A. Besides, there was a good chance they could help. There was a break-in. Did any of you happen to see someone crawling through a window Saturday night? Someone broke into Dahlia Calhoun's home? The blonde pressed her hand to her chest as if shocked, but her narrowed eyes told me it was an act. Was anyone hurt? What was taken? Any suspects? Miss Calhoun and her son are shaken up, but fine. I'd appreciate it if anyone who was staking out Dahlia's house Saturday night would go through their photos and video footage for anything suspicious. I flashed them a wide grin. I'm willing to pay double the going rate if you have anything useful. The crowd of paparazzi stared as if I'd stunned them. Taking advantage of their momentary confusion, I ducked inside the service entrance and made my way toward my office. I had things to do before I could go home to Dahlia and Gunner. Check email, sign anything that needs my John Hancock, and get the hell out of here. Ten minutes, tops. An hour later, I'd almost finished my to-do list. Between the holidays, bowl game, and the gumbo pot drop, we were booked solid until the second week in January. The p &L statement showed more profit than loss. Always a good thing. I was in the process of signing checks when my phone rang. One quick glance at the screen reminded me I had a fishing trip to finalize. Gabe, I was just about to call you. Is that a good thing? He chuckled, but he didn't sound amused. We need to nail down our play day before your wife kicks my ass. I sealed the last of the checks in an envelope and dropped the stack in my outbox. How's Thursday at the ass crack of dawn? You sure you can get away? Dante tells me you're shacking with Dolly and her kid. Nothing, and I mean nothing, was a secret in my family. Stuart's keeping an eye on them until we catch her stalker. You sound good. Gabe didn't have a poker face, or a poker voice for that matter. I could hear the concern and unasked questions. I am. Dolly and I are working things out. Not a total lie. When I said to talk to her, I didn't mean move her in. I understood where he was coming from, but that didn't mean I agreed. Don't give me a hard time about this. You know how I feel about her. I do and I'm not, he sighed. Are you sure you're ready to raise someone else's kid? He is someone else's, right? I ignored his question. Considering you and Maggie have custody of Joe's three children, hello, Kettle, I'm Pot. Just be careful. Her son is old enough to get attached. He's my son, too. Times like these, it amazed me my family hadn't put two and two together. Sure, Dolly and I had denied, deflected, and outright lied, but Gabe and I were close. He had to at least suspect Gunner was mine. I'm aware. Gotta run. See you at the marina Thursday before dawn. I disconnected before he could piss on my parade anymore. Yes, I was moving fast with Dahlia. Yes, she had a lot going on. No, I wasn't making a mistake. My phone rang again. Look, I appreciate your concern, but you need to get a life. I got this. Is this Leo Marchioni? A nasally male voice came across the line. Definitely not Gabe. Speaking. I glanced at the clock. This is Artie Guzman. Shit. 
I always knew this day would come, but I had zero intentions of handing over the poodles. It had been 18 months, for Christ's sake. What can I do for you, Artie? I shrugged into my jacket and grabbed my keys. I would like my dogs returned as soon as possible. Somehow he made the statement sound like a question. No. What do you mean, no? They're my dogs. I miss them horribly. This wasn't part of the deal, Artie whined. I'll send you a check to buy new ones. I don't want your money. I want Fifi, Cupcake, and Eugene. His voice cracked like a prepubescent boy. It's been 18 months. There's no sense in uprooting them again. Get new dogs. I hung up and slid the phone into my pocket. Artie Guzman had some nerve calling so close to Christmas. He wants to spend the holidays with his family, just like I do. The thought stopped me dead. Wasn't that what I'd asked of Dahlia? To uproot Gunner so close to Christmas? The situation was different. The three poodle tears didn't have a stalker. But am I being selfish? Holding on to Dahlia and the dogs when they don't belong to me? And my son? What's best for him? With or without her, Gunner is my son. I have to be there for him no matter what. The longer I mulled over the situation, the deeper the pit in the bottom of my stomach grew. Gunner was my son, and I intended to be his dad, regardless of what happened between me and his mom. Dolly and I needed to have a conversation. I was sick of pretending I wasn't a father. We needed to come up with a plan that worked for both of us. I intended to do just that as soon as I got home. But before I made it to the door, Harrison fucking Merriweather walked into my office. Marchione. His voice dripped with good old Southern charm. Seriously, the guy could have done the voiceover for Clark Gable, or better yet, Colonel Sanders. What can I do for you, Harry? I looked him over. For the life of me, I couldn't understand all the hype. Between the spray tan and overly bleached teeth, he appeared even more plastic in person than he had in photographs. You can stay away from Dahlia. He balled his hands into fists. I'd seen this scene play out a couple hundred times in the movies. The caring friend or love interest or entitled prick warning the bad boy with the heart of gold to stay away from the leading lady. It had always struck me as ridiculous these well-meaning folks would go behind their loved one's back under the guise of doing what was best for them. I had no idea which category Harrison fell into, and frankly, I didn't give a shit. He'd crossed a line. Don't you think Dahlia can make her own decisions? Not where you're concerned, he puffed out his chest. I cracked a grin before I could stop myself. The overinflated prick reminded me of a rooster, and not just any cock. He looked like Foghorn Leghorn from the old Bugs Bunny cartoons. You think this is funny? Do you know she lost her job because of you? How about the fact that her father is afraid to have her come home because he can't afford to risk being tied to the mafia? While I hadn't known either, I refused to tip my hand. No, what I find funny is you coming here in that seersucker suit and trying to tell me what to do. He went so red-faced and rigid, I half expected to see steam shooting out of his ears. If you're finished telling me to stay away from the woman I love, I was on my way home. Last night was spectacular. You'll excuse me if I'm in a hurry for round two, or would it be considered round six? I turned to leave, which was why I didn't see his fist coming until it connected with my jaw. Chapter 14 Dahlia no bull. Gunner slammed his hand down on the table. Bulls are for babies. I drew a deep breath and silently counted to ten. It was bad enough he'd insisted on Leo's peanut butter Captain Crunch for lunch. But now this? You can't eat cereal on a plate. The milk will spill. No bull. He glared. Bunny milk. Once again, I found myself counting to ten. Like most mothers, I'd always thought of my son as special. He was smarter, cuter, better behaved than the average baby. I mean, he'd slept through the night before he turned a month old. And then he'd hit the terrible twos. Hard. I rummaged through the pantry. Please, please, 
please be in here. Bunny milk! Gunner swung his arms around like a maniac and, of course, sent the bowl of cereal flying. Fifi, Cupcake, and Eugene shot into action. The three poodle tears, as Leo called them, cleaned up the cereal in record time. I made a mental note to mop the dog spit from the floor once I had the tiny tyrant down for his nap. We don't have any bunny milk. I pulled a sippy cup from the cabinet. How about juice? No! He screamed and flung himself backward. Had I not been standing beside him, he would have cracked his skull on the tile. That's enough, young man. You are in timeout. Without baby restraining devices like a crib or high chair, I was at a serious disadvantage. Holding the flailing child in my arms, I walked to the living room and deposited him on Leo's Persian rug. Gunner flopped around on the floor, rolled to his back, and ended the tantrum by raising and dropping his legs several times like a malfunctioning mousetrap. The buzzer rang, and the dogs barked in a pitch that ranked up there with nails on a chalkboard. Gunner sat up wide-eyed and blessedly quiet. Then again, the fluff balls were making enough noise without his help. Quiet! I hurried to the intercom and pressed the button. Yes? Thank God, let us up, it's a zoo down here. Shauna called out over what sounded like a crowd of angry people. My mind went blank. You're here? Yes, now buzz us up, we have our hands full. Okay. Thankfully, I'd spent enough time at Leo's condo over the years to know how the security system worked. After entering a code, the screen beeped three times and flashed green. It's open, just let me put the dogs away. Gunner cocked his head. Who's that? Oh, God. I'd spent the previous two and a half years going to heroic measures to keep my friends from meeting my son. I'd met them in public, lied about his whereabouts, and gone as far as showing them fake pictures of kids I'd found on the internet. Anything to keep mine and Leo's secret. In hindsight, it had been unbelievably naive to think this day wouldn't come. Mommy's friend Shauna is here to visit. Who else? She'd said us, not me. Who's with her? Enzo? Please, not Enzo. Sure, he's her husband, but he's Leo's brother. I'm so not ready for this. Nana? Who's that? Shauna, mommy's friend. Making kissy noises, I patted my leg to get the dogs to follow me into Leo's bedroom. Once they were inside, I closed the door and pressed my back against the wall. My chest ached, and I was having a heck of a time catching my breath. This is it. I'm having a heart attack in front of my child. He'll need therapy for decades if I croak in front of him. Shauna's knock pulled me back to the moment at hand. I gathered every ounce of courage, walked to the door, and opened it to find Shauna, Maggie, and two small children in the hall. There is a special place in hell for the paparazzi. Shauna pushed past me, carrying two duffel bags, but stopped short. I couldn't bring myself to turn around. Instead, I focused on Maggie and the not quite two year old by her side. Hi, Ella. The little girl hid her face in her mother's thigh before darting past me into the house. Rocco wiggled and squirmed in her arms. Maggie shifted him to her other hip and offered me a sympathetic smile. We heard what happened Saturday night and thought you might need some toys and whatnot for Gunner. Thanks. I wasn't expecting company. I stammered, unsure which problem to address first. We tried to call you, but you didn't answer your phone. She walked into the apartment and stopped short beside Shauna. Gunner and Ella stood a foot apart, staring at each other. Ella was almost a year younger and small for her age, but there was absolutely no denying the resemblance between them. Wow. Shauna turned back to me and motioned toward the kids. Either you go for a specific type of man or... Or you have some serious explaining to do. Maggie set Rocco down beside his sister. Ella threw her arms around Gunner. Hi. 
He gave her a quick hug, jerked away, and wiped his arms as if she'd infected him with girl cooties. I whispered, we should sit. This is going to take a minute. Shauna's mouth fell open. He's Leo's? I mean, he looks like Ella. And Rocco. Maggie continued to stare at the children. Is he really their cousin? Not trusting my voice, I nodded. I knew it. Shauna threw her head back and laughed. I knew there was no way the two of you were just friends. Does Leo know? Maggie spoke softly. I barely heard her over our louder friend. I sank onto the couch and motioned for them to join me. Shauna plopped down, smiling like she belonged in a toothpaste commercial. Maggie sat, but she furrowed her brow and kept her eyes on the kids. Leo and I found out we were pregnant a month or so before Joe and Rebecca passed away. I glanced between them. While I hadn't expected my best friends to take the news in stride, Maggie's reaction concerned me. The mother of five turned to me with a heartbroken expression. You were scared. That's putting it mildly. A shiver ran through me. Leah was convinced the same thing would happen to me, and I nodded toward Gunner. I can understand that. But it's been three years since they died. Leo is out of the, you know what? Why keep Gunner hidden from his, she swallowed hard, from his family? We were waiting to see if Gabe and then Marco could get out of the M.O.B. After he did, Leo and I were barely speaking. I frowned at my hands. And there's my father's campaign. The Marchionis may be free, but the rumors haven't gone away. Does Gunner know Leo is his father? Maggie whispered. I shook my head. Not yet. We plan to tell him when he was older. Oh. She turned her attention to the little ones. I know it's a lot to ask, but could you guys please not tell Gabe and Enzo? My friends exchanged glances, sighed, and nodded. The trio of toddlers sat in a semicircle near the Christmas tree. Rocco gnawed on a plastic block while Ella and Gunner each built their own masterpieces. It's uncanny. Shauna pressed a hand to her lower abdomen. I guess I don't have to wonder what mine will look like. Wait. My mouth fell open. You're pregnant? She grinned. You, the woman who swore she'd never have kids? I glanced between her and Maggie. Did you know about this? Nope. Maggie smiled, but it seemed forced. Congrats. I bet Enzo is over the moon. He's quite proud of his sperm. What's perm? Gunner wrinkled his nose. Perms make your hair curly. I turned back to Shauna. You're going to need to grow a brain to mouth filter before the baby arrives. Gunner patted his mop of dark curls. I have perm. Me too. Ella placed both her hands on her head. Gunner took the opportunity to steal two of her blocks while she was distracted, and of course, Ella let out a blood curdling scream. Maggie and I shot to our feet. While I negotiated with the tiny terrorist, she opened one of the oversized duffel bags and presented the children with books, puzzles, and two chunky tablets. When I returned to the couch, Shauna had gone pale. Are you okay? She nodded without tearing her gaze from the toddlers. Are they always so loud? You haven't seen anything yet, Maggie smirked. Wait until bath time. Or when you're trying to convince them to eat. Right before you got here, Gunner threw a fit because he wanted cereal on a plate. I laughed despite the tension in the air, or perhaps to break it. I had no idea that bowls are for babies. Shauna waved her hand. Stop trying to freak me out. Why didn't you tell me about the B-R-E-A-K-I-N? Maggie laughed. <laughs> Look at you already watching what you say. Shauna flipped her the finger. Seriously, doll, I'm hurt. We're friends and I had to hear about this from Evelyn. 
I was planning to call both of you, but I haven't had time to breathe. I've been operating in crisis mode. The mental image of Leo's mother telling the world my personal business flashed through my mind. I hate that you heard it from her, of all people. There's no such thing as a secret in this family. Maggie seemed to realize what she'd said and snapped her mouth shut. She's taking this hard. I reached forward and took her hand. Maggie, I know you're upset with the choices Leo and I have made. I really am sorry for lying to you and everyone else for so long. I get it. You were in an impossible situation and scared. She sighed. I'll be okay once the shock wears off. For the record, I would have done the exact same thing. The whole M-A-F-I-A thing freaks me out, Shauna said. Maggie nodded and forced a smile. I probably would have made the same decision. Great. Now that we have that settled, Shauna made a sour face. Any word from that jackass rabbit investigator your dad hired? I'd spoken to Shauna about the stalker on several occasions. She'd earned her private investigator's license last year and opened her own agency. But I'd avoided hiring her outright. As my friend, there were inherent conflicts of interest with her taking on my case. Not to mention my father and Robert had insisted their guy had it under control. No, but I'd like you to look into something for me. I hated to ask, but Harry visiting at the same time as the break-in bugged me. I saw Harrison yesterday. He refuses to give up on the whole marriage thing. Maggie frowned. Sense of entitlement much? It got a little ugly. I sucked in a breath and met Shauna's gaze. The weird thing is, he happened to be in New Orleans Saturday night. It's probably nothing, but would you mind doing some digging? I thought you'd never ask. Shauna stood and cracked her knuckles. Mind if I hop on Leo's computer? Go ahead. His laptop is in his office. Second door on the right. Shauna practically ran down the hall. Maggie's eyes widened. You don't think he has anything to do with what happened, do you? No, but I don't believe in coincidences. I scooted closer and lowered my voice. I'm sorry I lied to you for so long. I understand why you two kept your relationship and the pregnancy a secret. But it breaks my heart to think Papa Joe may never meet Gunner. He's his grandson. My throat tightened to the point I doubted I could speak. He's not doing well at all. Evelyn's asked everyone to go to Sicily for Christmas. She thinks it'll be his last. Leo told me, What's going on between you and Leo? She sighed. Are you absolutely sure the two of you can't make it work? I don't know. Watching my son play with his cousins made my chest ache. He deserved to know both sides of his family. Leo and I didn't need to be a couple for that to happen, but part of me wanted it, wanted him. I'm sorry, I overstepped. She gave me a half hug. You know I'll have your back no matter what you decide. Thanks, Mags. Shauna poked her head around the corner. You don't happen to know Leo's password, do you? Gunner Joseph 0411, I said without thinking. Maggie waited until Shauna went back down the hall before arching an eyebrow. He uses your son's name and your birthday? And you know his password? I hitched a shoulder. It's been over a year. I'm sure he changed it by now. I'm in, Shauna called from the guest room. Maggie gave me a knowing look. As I was saying, I'm not denying we care about each other, but you of all people should know it's not that simple. You and Shauna were there while I cried my eyes out for an entire year. A year, Maggie. I shook my head. And that's not even the worst part. He was seeing Gunner behind my back the entire time. She gasped. How? He convinced Christina to bring Gunner to him in the afternoons, 
and neither of them thought I had a right to know. Did you confront her about it? I shook my head. She quit before I had the chance. Rocco crawled to the sofa, pulled himself up, and offered her a drool-covered block. Ball. Come here, you. Maggie scooped the child into her arms before turning back to me. What did Leo have to say about it? I rolled my eyes. He claims he was giving me space because of Harry. She frowned. But you don't believe him? Yes and no. I hadn't had much of a chance to analyze mine and Leo's conversation before the flashbulbs went off the night of the party, let alone figure out how I felt about it. I'm not sure his reasons matter. I don't trust him not to hurt me again. Maggie smiled. But he was the first person you called after the break-in. The police weren't an option and Leo lives nearby. I couldn't look her in the eye while spouting off such lame excuses. I'd called Leo because he was the only person on the planet that could make me feel safe. Shauna walked back into the room, waving a stack of papers. Ladies, we have a problem. That was quick. Part of me was glad for the interruption, but the other part worried whatever Shauna had found was worse than bearing my soul to Maggie. It pays to have friends with access to state and federal databases. She handed me a police report, complete with a mugshot of the man who'd asked me to marry him. The information was buried, but Harrison Merriweather is a serious SOB. The charges made my blood turn to ice. Domestic abuse? Chapter 15 Dahlia. There was something magical about a toddler's laugh. Young children laughed with their entire beings. Unlike adults, the world hadn't taught them to give a damn about what others thought. If only I could borrow a little of that joy. I slid a grilled cheese sandwich onto a plate and handed it to Maggie. She cut it into triangles, added a handful of sliced bananas, and set it in front of Gunner. He stopped giggling long enough to pop a piece of fruit into his mouth. Catch up, please. Ella tilted her head to the side. Catch up, too. Shauna wrinkled her nose and squirted the sugary red condiment onto each of their plates. More here. He pointed to an empty spot on his plate. Shauna added a bit more and the bottle made a rude sound. The kiddos burst into peals of laughter. Even little Rocco let loose a belly laugh that had the adults in the room giggling along with them. Mommy, party. Ella scrambled down from the chair, leaving a bright red smear on the upholstery. Maggie moved like the wind, grabbing the child from behind and hurrying down the hall. Shauna cringed. Suddenly I understand why my grandparents covered their furniture with plastic. Staying guard is a godsend but try to talk Enzo into leather couches before you give birth. I handed her a grilled cheese. Better yet, before your water breaks. Thanks for that mental picture. She took a quick bite. I'm going to keep poking around in you know who's past. I'd appreciate that. Honestly, I don't know how the media hasn't gotten a hold of his rap sheet or how you were able to find it so fast. The charges were dropped, but the restraining order is still in effect. I've seen this sort of thing before. My guess is someone paid to keep the story quiet. The only reason I found it is my access to the back door of the state database. You're a little scary. Not scary. I just have friends in IT dungeons. Shauna polished off a juice box and let loose a burp that had Gunner giggling. Excuse me. I'm barely pregnant and I've already lost control of my bodily functions. Honey, you haven't seen anything yet, I said laughing. Her expression turned dreamy, very un like As if she caught herself, she shook her head and squared her shoulders. You didn't pick up on any red flags with Harrison? None until lunch yesterday. Even still, I thought he was pushy, not an abuser. I'd spent a considerable amount of time with Harrison. 
He'd never as much as raised his voice at me, let alone a hand. I walked a fine line between asking an honest question and coming off as accusing the victim. What do we know about his ex-wife? Could there be more to this than we know? Shauna's mouth fell open. You can't be serious. You saw the photos I dug up. The images of the former Mrs. Merriweather's bruised and swollen face had turned my stomach. However, I was having a difficult time reconciling the man I thought I knew with the monster who'd done that to his wife. I'm not implying she lied or deserved it or anything of the sort. I'm curious. I didn't even know he'd been married before. Nudging her shoulder, I whispered, Hormonal much? She held her arms out wide. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how feminism died. Who died? Gunner frowned. The ketchup. She squeezed the bottle until it made the fart sound again. Sufficiently distracted, Gunner shook his head and shoved a hunk of banana into his mouth. Shauna turned back to me. Any idea where you're going to live? I'm thinking about going back home until Robert or my father kick us out. I put the last sandwich on my plate and joined them at the table. Is that a good idea? What about the... She gave the kiddos the side eye. Is it safe? Nope, not at all. I'll have Stuart until the end of the week. And then what? She rolled her eyes. You're talking about a short-term solution to a long-term problem. You guys are welcome to stay with me and Enzo. Nothing personal, but Enzo is one step away from OCD when it comes to keeping your place tidy. I nodded to Gunner. I don't think he's ready for a toddler. I'm not a toddler. He pressed his gooey fingers to his chest and stuck his elbows out at his sides. I'm big boy. I shower. Shauna seemed to think over what he'd said before giving up and poking his belly. That's right. You are a big boy. I'll figure something out. I focused on keeping the stress out of my voice. The last thing I needed was Gunner knowing I was upset. But staying here isn't going to work. Why not? She set her chin in her hand and grinned like she knew the punchline to a joke I hadn't even told. Doesn't he want you here? He does, but I'm not sure about his motives. Motives, schmotives, she smirked. You're overthinking it. I am not. I flicked a stray lump of soggy bread in her direction. It's been a year. The only thing that changed is I finally grew a spine and told him I didn't want a relationship with him. What if he wants me because I turned him down? For once, Shauna had nothing to say. She simply nodded and took a bite of her lunch. Maggie returned to the kitchen and deposited Ella back in her chair. What did I miss? We were discussing living arrangements. I forced a smile and changed the subject to one that would have Maggie talking for hours. The kids. When did Ella start showing an interest in potty training? A few weeks ago. She's doing great, but I still put her in pull-ups when we go out and at night. She motioned between me and Shauna. What about living arrangements? So much for that idea. Doll thinks Leo is only interested because she refused him. Maggie nodded. I can see why you'd think that, but you weren't the only one moping around the past year. That's just it. It's been too long. It's best if we both move on. Never mind how comfortable I am with him or how good he smells or how it warms my heart to see him with Gunner. Never mind how my body reacts to him or the fact I'd slept better in his bed than I had in months in my own. Shauna frowned. If that's how you feel, then do it soon. The longer you stay here, the harder it will be on Leo when you go. And the other man in your life. Maggie mumbled. I hated that my two best friends seemed so damned disappointed in me. Lately, I seemed to have a knack for letting the people I cared about down. I'll talk to Leo this afternoon. Worst case scenario, I'll rent a place in the middle of nowhere, USA, and hide out until after the election. 
Shauna said. Just make sure you let us know where you are. Rocco's eyes drifted closed and his head tilted to the side a couple of inches before he jerked awake, only to repeat the process three more times. I hate to cut this short, but I should get these two home. It's nap time. Maggie stood and cleared the dishes. No nap. I'm not a totter. Gunner huffed and folded his arms. Shauna exaggerated a yawn. I'm not a totter either, but I love naps. He narrowed his green eyes. Maggie picked up Rocco and settled him on her hip. Come on, little man, let's go see Daddy. Ella clapped her hands. Daddy! Gunner's shoulders slumped. I go home? As difficult as the uncertainty of our situation was for me, I couldn't imagine how confusing it was for him. Unfortunately, I didn't have the answers he needed. Not today, but I'm staying here with you. I kissed his chubby cheek. Want to tell Rocco and Ella goodbye? He waved without lifting his head. Maggie gave him a quick hug. It was nice to meet you, Gunner. Bye bye. Ella bit her lip and patted his arm. Bye. Gunner sighed. His reaction confused me. It wasn't as if we'd never spent the night away from home. He'd slept in more hotels than some adults I knew. During the campaign, Christina and Gunner had traveled with me from time to time. I never could have juggled motherhood in my crazy schedule otherwise. Leo came through the front door and glanced around as if he'd walked into the wrong condo. Toys covered most of the floor and tables and couch. The normally spotless kitchen looked like a bomb of ketchup and dishes had exploded in it, and his beloved poodles had been replaced with three toddlers and two sisters-in-law. However, when his gaze fell on me and Gunner, he gave us a crooked smile that was crookeder than usual due to a swollen jaw. Ella ran to him and wrapped her arms around his legs. Unky Leo. Hey, munchkin. He picked her up and tossed her into the air. Gunner huffed, climbed down from the chair and marched to them. My turn. Shauna, likely sensing a toddler meltdown of epic proportions, took Ella from his arms. Come on, princess. Your daddy is going to send a search party for us if I don't get you home soon. Leo mouthed, thank you, before scooping Gunner up and flying him around the room. Still holding the boy in the air, he made his way to Maggie and gave Rocco a quick kiss. No, my Leo. Gunner wiggled hard enough that he broke free of Leo's grasp and fell. Leo caught him, but had to drop to one knee to keep his balance. Easy there, little guy. Pressing a hand to my heart, I struggled to catch my breath. Clinging to Leo, Gunner shot first Ella, then Rocco a dirty look. My Leo! Maggie dipped her chin, but not before I saw the pain in her expression. We should get going. Leo, don't forget the fishing trip. It's set for Thursday morning. Still kneeling, he whispered something to Gunner. Bye. He grunted and thrust his thumb in his mouth. I'll call you later. Shauna gave me a pointed look and waved to Leo and Gunner. See you soon. He waited until his sisters-in-law and the kids were gone before winking at me. Honey, I'm home. What happened to your jaw? I took a shaky step toward him. We'll talk later. He turned his attention back to Gunner. It looks like you had a fun morning. No. Once again, he folded his arms and tucked his chin to his chest. On that note, it's nap time. I took a step forward. Come on, Mr. Cranky Pants. It wasn't unusual for Gunner to have a tantrum and resist going to bed. I chased him around the house on more than one occasion. What was unusual were the big, fat tears running down his face. I'd never seen him so brokenhearted. Hey, bud, what's wrong? Leo pulled him into a hug. Gunner clung to him. 
I said. Leo glanced at me as if for backup, but I was as lost as he was, maybe more. How about Mommy and I take a nap with you? That earned him a slight smile from the child. Come on. Leo stood with our son in his arms and held his hand out to me. My brain screamed, this isn't a good idea. But I couldn't bring myself to say no. Chapter 16, Leo. Naps were wasted on kids. I hadn't crawled into bed in the middle of the afternoon for actual sleep since college. Now that I had, I planned to do it more often, especially if it meant curling up with my family. Gunner had drifted off the second his head hit the pillow, but he hadn't released me. Whatever was going on in the little brain of his must have been bad. Even zonked out, he kept his hand on my arm as if he feared I'd leave. I'm not going anywhere, buddy. Dahlia whispered, what happened to your jaw? I debated how to tell her about my run-in with Harrison since I'd left work and it come up blank. The truth was, I didn't know how she'd react, and that cut me to the bone. Leo? Might as well tell her now. It's not like she'll yell and wake the little guy. I stared into her gorgeous blue eyes. Harrison's sucker punched me. What? She jerked back as if I'd struck her. Gunner mumbled something in his sleep and curled closer to me. Dahlia sighed. We should talk in the living room. I motioned to the child holding my shirt as if it were a life preserver and shook my head. Her frown deepened. Did you hit him back? Nope. I didn't care for the way she asked the question. It came way too close to her taking the douchebag side without hearing the story. For the record, I was defending your honor. What do you mean? She rested her head on the pillow and stared. I had no idea what was going on in that beautiful head of hers, but she seemed more intrigued than pissed off. He came to my hotel and told me to stay away from you. She closed her eyes and sucked in a breath. I pointed out that you were an adult, capable of making your own decisions. He hit you for that? Running my hand over Gunner's back to remind her there was a small child present, I whispered, I... Might have insinuated we had sex last night. Dahlia's mouth fell open. I'm sorry. It was stupid, but the guy pissed me off. I dropped my gaze to our son. She laughed so softly I thought I was imagining it. When I looked up, she flashed me a wide smile. I wish I could have seen his face. You didn't miss anything. He's had so much Botox, nothing much moved. But I swear I saw steam coming out of his ears. She laughed again, this time burying her face in the pillow to muffle the sound. Your turn. I reached over and ran my fingers through her long, dark hair. How did you handle things with Maggie and Shauna? I came clean. They took one look at him and knew he was yours. Her voice cracked. Maggie's taking it hard, but they both agreed to keep it to themselves for the time being. We should break the news to my folks soon. Too many people know. It's only a matter of time before someone slips. You're right, and I'm sick of lying. Her expression softened. But I should have a conversation with my dad before we go public. I wanted to argue that we'd waited long enough, but I nodded. Why was Gunner so upset? Dahlia sighed and glanced away. He asked if we could go home, but I'm not sure if that's what's bothering him. You've both been through a lot in the last couple of days. I knew Jack shit about kids, especially little ones, but I knew they needed stability. If my mother yanked me out of my bed in the middle of the night and whisked me away, I'd be a little clingy too. Now there's a mental picture I'll never be able to shake. She snickered. Seriously though, if my mom did that to me, I'd be downright homicidal. How do we help them feel safe? As soon as the question left my mouth, a wall went up between us. I'm talking about a Game of Thrones level ice wall with archers on the parapets. The best way would be for me to take him home. Back to her place? Is she fucking kidding? That's a horrible idea. I know, but I don't have many other options. She looked anywhere except at me. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt if she walked out of my condo, she'd be walking out of my life for good. You can stay here. I'll buy whatever you need. Name it. We can't stay here, Leo. She sat upright. 
Is it the paparazzi downstairs? We can go somewhere, just the three of us. Somewhere they can't find us. Panic made my voice quiver. I couldn't lose them. Not when I'd finally gotten my family under the same roof. It's not the press. Then what is it? Dahlia dipped her chin. The longer we're here, the more attached to you he's going to get. I'm his father. Why is that a problem? I eased back from Gunner and sat up. You know why. She walked to the door and motioned for me to follow. Once again, I found myself trailing behind her like a lost puppy. I stopped in the living room and folded my arms. I do know why, but it has absolutely nothing to do with Gunner getting attached. What's that supposed to mean? She rounded on me. I didn't care that I'd pissed her off because beneath her anger was a layer of fear deep enough to wade through. The longer you stay, the more attached you're going to get. You egotistical bastard. Shaking her head, she let out a bitter laugh. How many times do I have to tell you it's over between us? I didn't want to believe her. In fact, I wanted to throw her over my shoulder like a damned caveman and lock her in the bedroom. But for the first time in my life, I had someone other than myself to consider. Someone who deserved two parents who put his needs before their own. I dropped my hands to my sides, drew a deep breath, and motioned to the couch. We should sit and discuss this like adults. Dahlia glared and seated herself on the edge of the sofa. I wove my way through the toys on the floor and mess in the kitchen to retrieve two water bottles from the fridge. After handing one to her, I sat as far from her as possible. Our relationship, or lack thereof, shouldn't have anything to do with Gunner. She opened her mouth to argue but sighed. You're right. He's my son. I have every right to ensure he's safe. Never in my wildest dreams had I thought I'd ever have this conversation with Dahlia. Then again, I'd never considered the possibility we wouldn't end up together. She straightened her spine. Are you saying I'm putting him in danger? If you go back to the house where a psychopath broke into Gunner's bedroom, then yes, I am. I opened the bottle and downed some water to give her time to respond. When she didn't, I continued. As for you not wanting my son to get attached to me, too bad. Her eyes widened. I didn't mean it like that. Then exactly what did you mean? I hated myself for the way I was treating her, but I'd learned a long time ago to start the way I intended to fly. If Dahl and I were redefining our relationship, I plan to set down some ground rules, starting with how we co-parent Gunner. You saw the way he reacted when Ella hugged you, like you were his... She clamped her mouth shut and closed her eyes. Father? My thoughts drifted back to the decisions we'd made while she was still pregnant. I'd screwed up big time. Not only had I let my fear cheat me out of a relationship with her, I'd missed every fucking one of Gunner's milestones. Leo, why are you doing this now? Tears streamed down her face and seared their way through my soul. I should have done it long ago. I leaned forward and rested my elbows on my knees. I stayed away from the hospital when Gunner was born because you didn't want to upset your dad. You think I wanted to go through labor alone? Her voice rose. We agreed it was best. No, you made the decision and I honored your wishes. I clasped my hands and mentally prayed for the strength to say what I needed to say, despite the fact it had hurt us both and quite possibly end with us on opposing sides of a custody battle. I don't understand what this has to do with what's going on now. You will if you'll let me finish. I swallowed past the lump in my throat. I saw my son for the first time through glass. The nurses wouldn't let me in the nursery because my name wasn't on the birth certificate. Dahlia turned her head. I didn't complain when you started traveling for work and taking him with you, even though it made it impossible for me to spend time with him. Memories of checking my phone every hour or so in hopes she'd sent me a pic or a text flooded me. The loneliness had worn on me, but I'd kept my mouth shut because I'd trusted her, trusted us. Why didn't you say anything then? The accusation in her tone hurt. Because I was afraid I'd lose you both if the people who killed Joe found out about you. Shaking my head, I added, Funny thing is, I lost you anyway, but I'm not going to lose Gunner. I waited years for you to want me, she whispered. I've always wanted you. How can she think otherwise? 
Dahlia frowned. If that were true, you would have made room for me in your life. Look at your brothers. They were in the same situation as you were, but Gabe and Maggie made it work. Marco and Nicolina are a different story, but Enzo was willing to walk away from the mafia and your entire family for Shana. She's putting this all on me? I wasn't the only one who had a family that needed walking away from. This is pointless. There's no sense in going around in circles about the past. It's time we both move on. She stood and shoved toys into a duffel bag. I was sick to death of her dodging the subject of her father. Do what you need to do, but I'm through pretending Gunner isn't mine. She froze in place. I agreed it was time we told your family the truth. That's a start, but it's not enough. I drew a deep breath and laid it out there for her. I'm going to speak to my attorney about establishing legal paternity. Now? Why? She balled her hands. What's changed? Our relationship has changed. I pushed myself to my feet and locked my knees to keep them from buckling. The woman was killing me, one glare at a time. I can't believe this. You're using our child to blackmail me into staying with you? She scoffed and continued packing. That's worse than Harry trying to push me into a loveless marriage. I'm screwing this up. No. Dragging my hands over my face, I said, will you stop and listen to me for half a second? She ignored me. Risking life and limb, I moved behind her and rested my hands on her shoulders. Between the warmth of her skin and the sweet scent of her hair, I was a goner. Argument or not, I'd never wanted a woman more than I wanted her. I never should have stayed away, but there was no way I could have done the friend thing with her without the hope of more. It would have been like cutting off pieces of my soul every time I saw her. Dahlia sighed and hung her head. Not a day has gone by since you pissed on that stick that I haven't wanted to be his father. I kept quiet because we agreed it was for the best at the time, but things have changed. She turned and met my gaze. The only thing that changed is I told you it was over between us. Right. But whether we're a couple or not doesn't change the fact he's my son. It's like we are saying the same thing but having two different conversations. She stormed into the kitchen. Resisting the urge to groan, I followed her. Look, I was always planning to claim him as mine. I just thought we'd be together. And since that isn't going to happen, you're forcing the issue. No, damn it, listen to me. You can leave. I pointed to the door. I'm not stopping you. Move on, go live your life, fall in love, do whatever the hell you want. That's your call. I'm going to establish legal paternity of my son regardless of whether you stay or go. Her eyes widened. Oh. I'm not doing this to hurt you, doll. It's killing me that I am. At the absolute end of my rope, I took a step back and laid myself bare. Don't you get it? My singular goal since the day we met was to make you happy. If it takes losing you for that to happen, I'll do it. I love you that fucking much. She gasped and covered her mouth. You do? My brain stuttered. Of course I do. A smile ghosted across her lips and her expression softened. I had no clue what the hell was going on with her. All I knew was that I'd done something right because for one brief moment, she'd looked at me the way she used to. I struggled to remember the last time I'd uttered those three little words to her. Too damn long ago. Did she really not know? I'm a moron. Tentatively, I drew her into an embrace and kissed her temple. I love you, Dahlia Elizabeth Calhoun. You've owned my heart since college, and it will kill me if you walk out of my life. I'll stay. She tilted her face up toward mine, but pulled away before I could kiss her. But that doesn't mean I'm ready to pick up where we left off like last year didn't happen. Like I told you before, I'll wait for you this time. The conversation had left me with a severe case of whiplash. Worst still, I had zero fucking clue if she'd agreed to stay because she loved me or because she hoped to talk me out of getting attorneys involved. Not that it mattered. I was Italian. One of my ancestors had invented the whole the end justifies the means routine. I wasn't above playing dirty to get what I wanted. And right now, I want to play dirty with Dahlia. All freaking night long. Chapter 17 Dahlia
Four days had passed since the night someone had broken into my house. It amazed me how much could change in such a short amount of time. I barely recognized Leo's condo. The place had always felt like an upscale bachelor pad, but now it had a daycare chic vibe going on. And the Christmas tree. He'd never put one up at his place. Except the one time in college, he'd stuck a branch in a whiskey bottle and hung bottle tops off it. Leo had paid a small fortune for movers to sneak into my house in the middle of the night and retrieve clothing and a few of my things. They'd also managed to bring Gunner's crib and some of his favorite toys to the condo without alerting the paparazzi camped out front. The condo wasn't the only thing that had changed. For the first time in over a year, I let my guard down with Leo. Part of the reason was him finally telling me he still loved me, but the bigger part was Gunner. Leo had been right. Whatever happened between us didn't change the fact he was Gunner's father. Hey, where do you think you're going? Leo called from the bathroom. Gunner squealed as he ran down the hall naked. Fifi, Cupcake, and Eugene followed the rogue toddler into the living room, but it was hard to say if they were trying to corral him or provide backup. A soaking wet Leo emerged from the hall with a towel in one hand and pajamas in the other. Come here, monkey. No jammies! Gunner climbed onto the sofa and proceeded to jump up and down as if in a bounce house. While he was freaking adorable, I couldn't enjoy the show. All I could think about was him peeing on the white sectional. He needs a diaper. I'm aware. Leo faked a left and lunged to the right, wrapping his arms around the child. Gotcha. No jammies! Gunner threw his head back against Leo's collarbone, while simultaneously kicking him dangerously close to the family jewels. Leo twisted sideways to avoid impact and tucked him under his arm like a rolled up newspaper. Watch the feet, little man. I'm not little. He let out a war cry that sent the dogs into a barking fit. I stood dumbstruck. Any doubt whose side the poodles were on vanished when they ran circles around Leo's feet. It was like a scene from a mashup of Gulliver's Travels and Lord of the Flies. The Lilliputians were definitely winning against the giant. Laughing, Leo released Gunner. Okay, okay, I give up. Yes! The naked toddler took a victory lap with the dogs. Not so fast! I scooped him up as he passed by and swung him in a circle before setting him down on the area rug. He whined and wiggled, but stopped when I blew raspberries on his tummy. Daddy, help me! My mouth fell open. Leo stilled and glanced between the boy and me. I flashed him a wide smile. Leonardo Andrea Marchione had spent most of his life surrounded by mafiosi. He was hands down the strongest man I knew. But his son calling him daddy for the first time brought tears to his eyes. Daddy isn't going to save you from the mommy monster. I growled and tickled Gunner Silly. No, no mommy monster. He giggled and squirmed and reached for his father. Leo cleared his throat, wiped his face on the back of his hand, and smiled like a man who owned the world. I sat on my heels and dressed Gunner while Leo covered his little face with kisses. We'd planned to tell Gunner Leo was his father, but had decided to wait until he had a chance to settle in. We'd also decided to tell the rest of the Marchionis the truth, but had yet to decide on when. Leo wanted to do it in Sicily, so his father could meet his grandson. However, I'd asked for time. The entire ordeal would go over much smoother once we determined, once and for all, if we were going to be a couple. Leo had been right about one thing. The more time I spent with him, the more attached I became. So much so that the idea of spending my life with him no longer seemed impossible. Go pick out a book for your bedtime story. I waited until he darted toward the bedroom before taking Leo's hand. Are you okay? Better than okay. 
He gave me a goofy smile. How about you? It's good that it happened naturally. I glanced down at our entwined fingers and smiled. I should get in there before he picks out war and peace. In a hurry? He wiggled his brows and a little piece of my heart melted. I'm looking forward to that dinner you promised me. Earlier that morning, I'd complained about going stir-crazy locked up in the condo. With a paparazzi setting up permanent residence on the street below, I didn't dare go out. Leo had suggested we have a date on the roof. Go read Gunnar's story. I'll have Stuart pick up our food. He leaned forward as if to kiss me. While I still had my doubts we'd ever be a normal couple, I'd wanted his lips on mine since the night he'd told me he loved me. I inched closer and closed my eyes. My phone rang, ruining the moment. Answer it. I'll take story duty. Leo stood and helped me to my feet. But the cell gets turned off when we officially start our date. Deal. I glanced at the screen and my heart sank. I hadn't spoken to my father since the day the paparazzi had photographed me and Leo outside Rocco's birthday party. I pressed the button and brought the phone to my ear. Hello? Dahlia, where in God's name are you? The background noise made it difficult to hear him. I'm still in New Orleans. I had no intentions of confirming or denying I was staying with Leo. My plan was to avoid direct answers as much as possible. Besides, I figured Harrison had already told him. I see. A rustling noise filled the line. Did you forget the gala was this evening? I'd absolutely forgotten. I barely knew what day of the week it was after being held hostage with a toddler by a pack of bloodthirsty reporters. Did you forget the part where you fired me? Fired? He barked out a laugh. I didn't fire you. I said I needed to put some distance between us until the Marchione debacle blew over. That is not what you said. I must have misunderstood you. It's no wonder we had a miscommunication with Robert in the middle of our relationship. Robert loves you, but you're right. I've been busy as a one-armed paper hanger, but I promise I'll make it up to you. Why don't you and Gunner come for supper tomorrow? He chuckled. I miss the squirt. Leo had plans to go fishing with his brothers from before dawn until late afternoon. I could do something early if I could slip past the paparazzi. How about brunch? You know how cranky Gunner gets in the evenings. I doubted Leo would like the idea of me going to Baton Rouge, but I needed to get out of the condo for a few hours or I'd go nuts. Does 10 o'clock work? That'll be fine. He shouted over the noise. I'll see the three of you then. Three of us? It's just me and Gunner. Tell Harry I'm willing to overlook you two living in sin for the time being, but we need to look at our schedules and pick a wedding date that doesn't coincide with the election. What the heck? Dad, Harrison and I... I bit my tongue. For whatever reason, my father seemed to think Harry and I were shagging up together. Worse, he thought we were engaged. Setting him straight would involve a long, drawn-out conversation, and I had other items on my agenda for the evening. You don't need to explain yourself to me. My dad laughed. Have a good night. You too. Thoughts spinning, I disconnected the call and wandered toward the master bedroom. We were staying in for our date night, but I planned to change out of my yoga pants and t-shirt. Then again, after the weird conversation with my father, I wasn't sure I'd be good company. Leo walked out of the guest room and eased the door shut. He took one look at me and his smile wilted. I motioned for him to follow. Once inside his room, he took my hands in his. What's wrong? Who called? My dad. I'd looked forward to our date all day, and telling Leo what my father had said would likely ruin it. Then again, I doubted I could enjoy dinner with so many questions dancing around in my mind. He tilted his head. 
talk to me. First, he asked where I was and if I'd forgotten the gala. I stepped back to get a little breathing room and gave him the highlights of the conversation, except the part where I'd agreed to have brunch in Baton Rouge. Leo shook his head. Why in the fuck's sake would Meriwether lie about you two living together? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Or does it? Harry knew how much I loved my father. Until recently, the only thing we'd ever argued over was what he called my pathological need to please my dad. Is this a ploy to manipulate me into accepting his proposal? Why didn't you tell him it was bullshit? Leo frowned and waved his hand as if to erase the question. That came out wrong. No, it's okay. It's a fair question. While I appreciated him walking back his words, I knew him. He'd said the first thing that had popped into his mind. I plan to tell him I'm not living with, nor do I have any intentions of marrying Harry. I just didn't want to get into it while he's at a campaign function. Fair enough. Leo scratched his jaw. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but is it possible Harrison lied to your father to save you some grief? How do you figure that? I sat on the edge of the bed and hung my head. Any hope of a stress-free date was gone. I assume Harrison knows your father hates me and wouldn't approve of your current living arrangements. He plopped down beside me. I see where you're going with this, but it still doesn't make sense. If he was looking out for me, wouldn't he have clued me in? Besides, I already told my father I wasn't going to marry Harrison. The images of the former Mrs. Merriweather's bruised and battered face made me queasy. Leo slung his arm around my shoulders. We can sit here and speculate all night, or you can call him and ask. Or we could pretend none of this happened and enjoy our date. I rested my head on his shoulder. He tilted my face toward his and kissed my forehead. That sounds good to me, but can you really do that? No, you're right. As much as I don't want to, the only way to know for sure is to talk to Harry. But there's no sense in calling him tonight. He won't answer. Should it worry me that you know his schedule? I nudged his side. It's Wednesday. He's not in Iowa with my father, which means he's playing poker with his friends. Leo stood and pulled me to my feet. Then forget about it until tomorrow. None of this will matter after a couple glasses of wine. You make a good point. I slipped my arms around him. He brushed my hair back from my face or tried to. His fingers got stuck a few inches from my scalp. Furrowing his brow, he leaned forward and sniffed. Is that strawberry jam? Groaning, I pulled back and folded my arms to hide the stains on my t-shirt. Yes. Gunner decided he wanted grape jelly after I made his PBJ. Leo chuckled. Go take a long, hot shower and meet me outside when you're ready. After spending days locked in a condo with a two-year-old, the thought of a few moments to myself made me swoon. You'll listen for Gunner? Yes. He set his hands on my shoulders and spun me in the direction of the bathroom. Now go. I'll have everything set up when you're finished. Chapter 18, Leo. Candles and a couple of strands of Edison bulbs illuminated my rooftop deck. Beyond the child-proofed railing, the French Quarter glittered and gleamed. Somewhere in the distance, a musician poured his soul into a saxophone. A bluesy rendition of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas filled the air. I lit the last of the standing heaters and opened a bottle of Dahlia's favorite wine to breathe. I tidied up Gunner's toys inside and lowered the lights. The warm glow from the Christmas lights added a hint of playful wonder that I fully intended to take advantage of. Dinner on the deck, kisses on the rug by the tree. Come hell or high water, our first date in over a year would be perfect. Stuart came through the front door carrying takeout from Enzo's restaurant. Judging by the aromas drifting up from the bags, my brother hadn't let me down. 
Then again, Enzo was a Michelin star chef. Surely he could handle a romantic dinner for two. Need anything else? Stuart turned to me. No, I'm good. Take the rest of the night off. I followed him to the door. I'll be back before you leave for the Gulf in the morning. I'm heading out around five. He clamped a hand on my shoulder. Good luck tonight. She's something special. That he'd spoken so freely surprised me. As a general rule, bodyguards were seen and not heard. He clenched his jaw. I didn't mean to. Don't worry about it. You've earned the right to speak freely after being assigned to my mother for a year. Punishment for betraying Marco or not, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. He chuckled and opened his mouth to say more, but my ringing phone interrupted him. Stuart gave me a quick nod and closed the door behind him. I checked the number on the screen inside. Leo Marchione. Mr. M, this is Julia. Um, Julia Carpenter? Did you get the information I asked for? I took the bags to the deck. She let out a nervous laugh. Yes, sorry it took me so long, but once I found the arrest record, I felt I needed to dig a little deeper. I'm so glad I did. Once I found his wife. Arrest record? Married? What the unholy fuck is she talking about? Julia, slow down and tell me what you found. I plated the salads and poured the antipasti into a serving bowl. Right, sorry, I emailed you the documents. She drew a deep breath. Merriweather was arrested for domestic abuse. His ex-wife pressed charges, but they were dropped. Dropped? Did she recant her story? A spoon fell from my hand and left an oil stain on the white tablecloth. I had a hard time picturing Dolly with anyone other than myself, but never in a million years would I think she'd get involved with the kind of guy who'd hurt his wife. Yeah, but she was beaten up pretty bad. The thing is, there's still an order of protection against him. Even weirder is I could find no record of his wife after it was issued. It's like she changed her name or left the country or... Right. I didn't need speculation. I needed to know what had happened to her. Anything else? I'm just getting started. Julia laughed, but this time it lacked any traces of nervousness. She seemed quite proud of the job she'd done. He was accused of assault, battery, felony, stalking in high school, and twice more in college. Nothing stuck. I sank into a chair. Not surprising. Anyway, I reached out to his victims, but only one of them would speak to me. Julia sounded as disgusted as I felt. She said she reported him, but the university and the police discouraged her from pressing charges. Suddenly, the balsamic glazed chicken wasn't appealing. Anything else? She said he went nuts when he found out she'd gone to the authorities. Her voice lowered. She claims he assaulted her sexually. That son of a bitch. I couldn't imagine Dolly was such an asshole. I needed time to process what I'd learned, but the shower had cut off several minutes earlier. She'd be joining me for our date sooner rather than later. I don't get it. I mean, I know his family has power, but how did the media not get a hold of any of this? Julia spoke in a high, uncertain voice that reminded me of her young age. I'm sure there are more women out there. I'm going to keep digging. Make sure you cover your tracks. The last thing either of us needed was Harrison finding out someone was looking into his background. Were you able to find out when he arrived in New Orleans? Not yet, but I'm working on it, she sighed. Please tell me you're going to make him pay. I'd love to, sweetheart, but that's not how the world works. Justice doesn't always prevail. Sorry that took so long. The hot water felt too good to... Dahlia noticed the phone in my hand and covered her mouth. Thank you, Miss Carpenter. I'll be in touch tomorrow, after I've had a chance to read the reports. I disconnected before she could reply. Everything okay? Dahlia tilted her head. I had two choices. One, tell her what I knew about Harrison fucking Merriweather and ruin our evening. Or two, tell her tomorrow and give her one night in the middle of the shitstorm to relax. I chose the latter. Nothing either of us needs to worry about tonight. I pulled her chair out ready to officially start our second first date. So ready. She seated herself and pressed her hand to her stomach. Everything looks delicious. Dahlia wore jeans and a form-fitting black sweater that made her breasts look amazing. She'd taken the time to blow dry her dark hair. I couldn't be sure without tasting her mouth, but I suspected she'd applied a little lip gloss. Filling our wine glasses, I said, you look beautiful. You're just saying that because I put on something other than yoga pants and a baggy t-shirt. 
No, I'm saying it because it's true. I ran my hand through her silky hair. No jelly. She laughed and leaned into my touch. I had to wash it twice to get it all out. I motioned to her plate. Dig in. This smells amazing. She took a bite, moaned, and closed her eyes. I've missed Enzo's cooking. Why deprive yourself? You can get it six nights a week. Rather than stick my foot further into my already full mouth, I glanced away. Sure, she could go to Enzo's most days, but she wouldn't go to my brother's restaurant if she was avoiding me. I shouldn't have stayed away. Dahlia laced her fingers with mine. It seems silly now. We could have avoided so much pain and frustration had we run into each other sooner. Kissing the back of her hand, I said, Maybe, but I think I needed the time away from you to realize how much I loved you. I've always loved you, but you're right. I think we both needed to grow up before we came back together. Her chin quivered for a split second. Had I not been staring at her gorgeous face, I would have missed it. She pulled her hand free and turned her attention back to her food. I didn't mind, in fact, I understood. We'd planned the date to give us a break from the craziness in our lives. We'd promised to keep it fun. Nothing heavy, a get-to-know-you-again meal. However, my mind drifted back to Harrison. I had a hard time believing Dahlia knew anything about what he'd done to his ex-wife or the other women. I knew her. She wouldn't befriend a guy like that. Not to mention, her father and his watchdog, Robert Becker, would never have given the green light to the relationship without conducting a thorough background check. Dahlia stopped eating. Are you okay? Don't do it. Don't bring it up. Say yes and get on with the evening. I got some information on Harrison while you were in the shower. I braced myself for her to freak out that I'd had him investigated. She sighed. Did Shauna call you? Shauna, no, why? The proverbial light bulb clicked on above her head. You had someone look into him too? Stunned, I sat back. Yeah, I did. I guess great minds think alike. What did Shauna find out? Dahlia took a large gulp of her wine. Domestic abuse allegations and a restraining order from his ex-wife? My girl found other women who claim abuse, stalking, and worse. So much for an easy, breezy evening. She set her napkin on the table and leaned forward. I swear to you, I had no idea about any of this. I would never have been around someone capable of such behavior. Until the other day at brunch, I had never seen him as much as raise his voice. I don't want to jump the gun, but I think we've ID'd your stalker. I think you're right. Dahlia pressed her hand to her stomach. It makes me sick to think he used the fear he created to get close to me. I should have figured this out months ago. You couldn't have known. I couldn't help but wonder how much the governor knew about the situation. Had he set the whole thing up to push her into Harrison's arms? More likely, he'd hatched the plan to frighten her into towing the party line. However, I chose to keep those thoughts to myself. I saw the shadow of the man who broke into my house. It wasn't Harrison, Dahlia frowned. He must have hired someone. I doubt he'd risk a breaking and entering charge. True. If I had any hope of salvaging the evening, I needed to get her laughing. It's kind of ironic. I was a card-carrying member of the Cosa Nostra the entire time we were together, but Senator Kendall turned out to be the violent one. She smiled and shook her head. Close enough. Want me to turn on some music so we can dance like we used to? I brushed a stray lock of hair from her eyes. I'd like that. I stood and offered her my hand. Alexa, play Dahlia's mix. The sweet, smoky notes of Willie Dixon's I Can't Quit You, Baby filled the night air as I drew her into my arms. Dahlia rewarded me with a slow grin and a slower roll of her hips. She draped her arms over my shoulders and swayed to the sultry tune. You remember? How could I forget? I slid my hands down her back. We made love for the first time to this song. Her eyes fluttered closed, and I took it as an invitation to kiss her. Dolly had the kind of lips men dreamed of, soft and full, demanding and delicate, capable of the sweetest whispers and the most wicked sins. We kissed and danced and explored each other's bodies through three full songs. She pulled back and tilted her head. Leo Marchione, are you trying to seduce me? I struggled to make sense of her mixed messages. She'd spent days telling me we couldn't pick up where we'd left off. 
Did I dare push for sex on our first official date? I'm not sure how to answer that, doll. I want you like I want my next breath, but I'm in no rush. Swaying to the music, she lowered her gaze to my mouth. Then let's take it nice and slow, in the bedroom. Her soft voice obliterated my willpower like a sledgehammer on glass. I pulled her to my chest, slid my hands to her thighs, and lifted her from the ground. Dahlia let out a breathy laugh that went straight to my cock. She laced her fingers behind my neck and wrapped her legs around my waist. Before I could say a word, she crushed my lips with hers. The woman might have suggested we take it nice and slow, but her kiss said she wouldn't have minded hot and fast against the wall. I thanked God I'd spent the previous year working out my frustration in the gym. Otherwise, I might have embarrassed myself while carrying her into the condo. She was doing a damn good job distracting me. Kissing a line down my neck, she whispered, Forget the bed. The couch is closer. I want you in my mouth. I tripped over one of Gunner's toys, but Dahlia didn't seem to notice. She'd taken full advantage of our aligned bodies to grind against me. I made it to the edge of the couch and dropped to my knees. Dahlia broke the kiss long enough to yank her sweater over her head. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. No bra. I needed to slow things down, to look at her, to savor the moment, but my brain had disconnected from my body. Easing her back, I lowered my mouth to her pale pink nipple and lost myself in the feel of her flesh. God, meow, that feels so good. Her back arched. So damned good. I fumbled with a button and zipper on her jeans. After what seemed like an eternity, I managed to peel the damn things down her mile-long legs. Holding my gaze, Dahlia ran her hand from her chin between her breasts and to her navel. It took every ounce of my self-control not to drive into her right then and there, but it had been too long since I'd had the pleasure of seeing her naked. I intended to take my sweet time getting reacquainted with her body. I'm feeling a little underdressed. She tugged at my shirt. We can't have that, how can we? I unbuttoned my shirt as fast as I could, but evidently it wasn't quick enough for her. Dahlia opened my belt and jeans. Rather than tugging them down, she slid her hand inside and cupped my cock. I saw stars. Needless to say, I lost my pants in record time. Finally naked, I settled between her thighs. The first taste of her sent me back in time to the first time I'd gone down on her. She'd never experienced oral and had been coming out of her skin nervous. It had taken her for freaking ever to come. The second time, she relaxed enough to allow me to learn her body. A little trial and error later, Shy Dahlia became an addict. It might have been a year since I'd touched her like this, but I hadn't forgotten how she liked it. I felt like a fucking rock star when she shattered within a couple of minutes. But I needed to get control of myself. If I didn't, it'd be over before it ever got started. Tell me what you want. You inside me. Now. She pulled me up her body. Need a condom. I'm still on the pill, and it's only been you. She bit her lower lip as the unasked question hung in the air between us. I haven't been with anyone else. I haven't even thought about it. She nodded. I held her gaze and joined our bodies. Each small fraction forward ignited a fire inside me, until I struggled to hold back. She wrapped her thighs around my waist and planted her heels against my ass, but I held in place. Slow and steady wins the race. Dahlia was having none of it. She rocked against me, but I refused to go deeper. Please, I'm not made of porcelain. I'm not going to break. I drew her earlobe between my teeth and eased in a little more. I could feel her frustration, but also her growing desire. I had no intention of slamming into her like a hormonal teenager, no matter how much I wanted to. Please, Leo. Screw it. Why am I torturing both of us? I thrust forward, burying myself inside her to the root. Dahlia gasped, digging her nails into my shoulders. I held myself up on one elbow and turned her face toward mine. Look at me. She opened her eyes and held my gaze as I drew back and pressed forward, over and over. Her moans grew more urgent and her thighs trembled. She came apart so suddenly that it seemed to take her by surprise. My body 
took over from there. After I'd regained the ability to breathe, I pulled her against my chest and brushed my lips across her cheek to her mouth. The kiss felt different, almost reverent. I eased to my side and pulled her along with me. You're amazing. I miss that so much. She closed her eyes and snuggled closer. Me too, babe. Me too. Chapter 19 Dahlia How? How is this possible? How did the stalker get inside the building and leave these on the doorstep? I couldn't bring myself to read the stalker's letter again, nor could I look at the images of me and Leo together on the rooftop deck. Or worse, the photos of us naked on the couch after dinner. The colorful lights on the Christmas tree illuminating our skin gave the images an artsy porno quality that made my stomach turn. Did Harrison do this? Or did he pay someone to do it for him? Whoever it was had taken the pictures from outside the glass door. He'd been feet away from us and we hadn't noticed. We hadn't heard a sound or seen a shadow. The dogs hadn't barked. Nothing. Determined to put an end to the nightmare, I grabbed my phone and dialed Harry's number. Good morning, Dahlia. His sleep-thickened voice made my skin crawl. I know you're the stalker, and I want it to stop. Now. As soon as the words came out of my mouth, I second-guessed myself. What had I thought would happen? He sure as hell wouldn't admit to fake stalking me. What are you talking about? The accusation seemed to have woken him. My fear and anger took over. I know it's you. The letters, the gifts, the break-in. The pictures last night were the final straw. Was it some sick joke to make me fall for you? He drew a deep breath. After a year of being inseparable, I'm surprised you think so little of me. But this isn't you, is it? Macchione has gotten into your head. Maybe Leo had planted the seed. But we had proof of the kind of man Harrison Merriweather was. Are you going to deny you have a history of domestic abuse and hurting women? No. Harry lowered his voice. I can never excuse my behavior. But those things happened a long time ago. I had a problem with alcohol. I don't know how I'd expected him to react. But contrition wasn't his style. I thought back to the various events we'd attended together. It never occurred to me that he'd refused wine with dinner, bourbon with my father, and all the rest because he was an alcoholic. Dahlia, I was the one holding your hand while you cried this past year. His voice cracked. I saw what you went through. How can you think I'm the one who wrote those letters? Doubt crept in. Were Leo and I wrong? Or was I a really shitty judge of character? Why did you tell my dad we were living together? He barked out a laugh. To get him off my back. Oh, it hadn't occurred to me my father would push Harry into a relationship, too. You're in danger, but you might want to look a little closer to home before you start pointing fingers again. Please, if you know something, anything. I'm done with you and your father's schemes. What is my father up to now? You'll figure it out soon enough. Don't call me again. He disconnected. Is he telling the truth? Is someone else behind this? And what schemes? My head throbbed in time with my racing pulse and my stomach turned. I rushed to the bathroom and hugged the toilet, but I'd gotten rid of everything I'd eaten the first four times I'd puked since seeing the photos. Dry heaving with a migraine ranked on the pain scale next to childbirth and root canals, but it gave me something to think about other than the psychopath determined to... To what? Kill me? Scare me? Ruin my life? He'd accomplished two out of the three. 
How long before he pulled the trigger and hit the trifecta? Right about then, I might have welcomed death. My head pounded so hard my vision blurred. Mama! Gunner shrieked in a pitch that put nails on chalkboards to shame. Mama, need you! I rested my head against the cool white porcelain. Gross, I know, but I didn't have the strength to stand, nor the mental capacity to answer my child. I'll get him, Stuart called from the hall. Thank you. I couldn't tell if I'd actually said the words out loud, but it was the thought that counted. Gunner's tantrum reached epic proportions. The boy screamed and shouted and screamed some more. Most of what he'd said was a garbled wailing, but I distinctly heard, Leo's dead! Oh God, no! I scrambled to my feet. Had the stalker gotten in the condo? Had he surprised Leo before he left for his fishing trip? I hit the hall in a blind panic and burst into the guest room. Stuart stood with his back to the door, staring down at the bed. At first, I thought he was watching Gunner have a meltdown, but the boy was on the floor beside him. I had no idea what was in the bed, but it appeared lumpy and large enough to be a man. Is it Leo? My feet refused to move. Stuart reached forward and scooped something in his hand before turning to me. The fish is sleeping. I glanced at the bed and noted the pillows piled under the blankets and blew out a breath. It wasn't a man in the bed. It was a fort built by a little boy for his beloved pet. The old fish sleeping? Gunner's voice cracked. It's okay, sweetheart. Please stop crying. I attempted to hug him, but he wanted no part of it. His gaze remained fixed on Stuart's hands. Pressing my hands to my temples, I closed my eyes and drew a shaky breath. I heard Leo's name, and I saw you standing there. I thought. The bodyguard dropped the goldfish back into its bowl and pulled me into an embrace. He's on the boat with the rest of the Marchionis. Marco's with him. He has security. I nodded, but the movement made pain explode behind my eyes. Do you want me to call him? Mama, is Leo fish sleeping? Gunner tapped on the glass. I shook my head at Stuart and moved to my son's side. Looks like it to me. On his back? I hated myself for lying, but I wasn't in the frame of mind to explain the circle of life to a two-year-old. Fifi sleeps on her back with her legs in the air all the time. He nodded. I want poodle tears. Okay. Gunner bolted from the room. Stuart scratched his jaw, wrinkled his nose, and sniffed his fingers. You might want to have the little guy wash his hands. What happened to the goldfish? Best I can tell, Gunner used a leg of teddy bear last night. And this is why toddlers can't have nice things. It was my turn to wrinkle my nose. At some point during the confusion, the migraine medicine had finally kicked in. The roar in my skull had quieted to a whine. Stuart gave me a knowing look. Go lie back down. I'll keep an eye on Gunner until you feel better. As much as I would have loved a little more sleep, I didn't have time. I'm expected in Baton Rouge this morning at 10. Would you mind driving me? Of course not. His shoulders tensed. Does Leo know you're leaving the condo? No, but it's been a horrible morning. The package. I shook my head as if that would rid me of the memories of those damned photos. I need my dad. I'll need a five-minute heads up to check outside before we leave. Stuart didn't look happy, but it wasn't his place to question my decisions. He was mine and Gunner's bodyguard, not our jailer. Two hours later, I walked into the governor's mansion. No amount of primping could hide the fact I'd spent most of the morning puking or crying or both. That I'd managed to pull myself together enough to make the trip was a miracle in and of itself, 
but I couldn't stand the thought of being in the condo without Leo. Dahlia, darling. My mother floated down the grand staircase like Scarlett O'Hara with a martini glass dangling from her fingers. Mimi! Gunner made a beeline for his grandmother. Look at you. I think you've grown a foot since the last time you visited. She pulled the boy into an embrace, but her gaze never left me. Bad morning. Migraine. I nodded to her cocktail. A little early, isn't it? Is it? I hadn't noticed. She released a dramatic sigh and held her hand out to Gunner. Come on, squirt. Let's go find granddaddy. He did a happy dance as he trailed behind his beloved Mimi. Complicated dynamics between mothers and daughters were as old as time, but mine ranked up there with Joan Crawford's Mommy Dearest and Carrie Fisher's relationship with Debbie Reynolds. Someone could make serious cash if they ever turned our story into a movie. Shauna's ringtone filled the air and scared the ever-loving crap out of me. Who knew girls just want to have fun could induce such panic? Ducking into the parlor, I whispered, Hi, Shauna. I'm at my dad's. Can't talk. I'll be quick, but it's important. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end. Whatever she had to tell me was bad for her to use her work voice. Okay. Sorry I'm a day late, but there was an article in the Picayune yesterday about the break-in and the stalker. Did you see it? I spent yesterday enjoying a wonderful day with Leo and Gunner. The last thing I'd wanted to do was skim my newsfeed for stories about myself and ruin the magic. The story was total crap. They had the facts about the stalker wrong, and they sensationalized the break-in. She hesitated. They didn't come out and say it, but they painted Leo as a potential suspect. I sank onto the settee that predated the Civil War. I didn't report any of that to the police. How did they find out? I'm not sure, but I'll do some digging. Is this what Harry was referring to? Did my father do this? Thanks for letting me know. Once again, I had a sick feeling. The timing of everything going on around me seemed like too coincidental. Shauna, before you go, the stalker left a package on Leo's doorstep this morning. You mean outside his building? No. I couldn't tell her about the photos without getting into the more personal details of our evening. He took pictures of Leo and me on the roof last night. Damn, okay, let's think this through. She went quiet for what felt like forever. I'm not thrilled that this guy knows where you are, but he probably slipped into Leo's building behind another resident. The idea of the psycho waiting outside for someone to enter or leave the condos freaked me out. That makes sense. Leo and I thought maybe Harrison was the stalker, but I had a conversation with him this morning. He admitted to hurting his wife and other women, but denied sending me the packages. If he were guilty, would he tell you the truth? He wouldn't, but I believed him. Or maybe I'd let him manipulate me again. Pushing the thought away, I said. Leo thinks the stalker was a reporter. It's a good theory, but I wouldn't completely discount Harrison. As for the photos, there are a couple of hotels that have a view of Leo's deck. I'm not overly concerned about that. There's more. I chose my words carefully. Some of the pictures were taken from outside the glass doors. Shauna gasped. Now I'm concerned. How did you two not notice? What about the dogs? Did they bark? We were distracted, and the dogs were locked in the bedroom. Uh-huh. Dare I ask what had you so distracted? She laughed. My father's voice boomed through the expansive foyer. Dahlia, where'd you run off to? I need to go. I'd accuse you of trying to dodge my questions if I hadn't heard your dad. Call me later after you're finished with your family. Funny, this doesn't feel like my family anymore. Will do. I hung up and stared at the Persian rugs on the polished hardwoods. The staff had decked the mansion out for the holidays. 
While the evergreen garland, crystal ornaments, and huge silver bows were pretty, they felt cold. There were no colorful lights on the trees, only white. No whimsical or handmade ornaments, only ones that matched the monochromatic theme. No music, no cookies baking, no stockings. While I hadn't grown up in this house, we lived in similar places. Museums of junk that held no sentimental value. We'd never had candid family photos in mismatched frames. The Calhouns didn't believe in spontaneity. We sat for portraits, and the end results were displayed in matching sterling silver. I wanted so much more for Gunner, and for myself. I missed the Marchionis. It had taken me a while to get used to everyone talking at once and the brothers' constant teasing. But now that I'd gone without it, I realized how much I loved being part of a huge family. I missed the warmth, the hugs, the food. But most of all, I missed Leo. Chapter 20, Leo. Thanks to the invention of the MRI, scientists had debunked the myth that human beings only use 10% of our brains. But my brothers hadn't gotten the memo. After annihilating a couple cases of beer, I doubted any synapses fired in their gray matter. You've been warming that chair for over an hour, Dante gave me a drunken glare. Seriously, what's up with you? I knew him too well to cower. The only place my baby brother was a threat was on the computer. Besides the woman I love being harassed by a psychopath, I deadpanned. Marco held his arms out at his sides. We all have problems, bro. But look around you. We're in the middle of the freaking Gulf of Mexico under a bright blue sky. This is no place to mope. I'm not moping. I glanced inside the cabin at Gabe and Enzo. They'd kicked back and were deep in conversation, likely about fatherhood or wives or current mortgage rates. Gabe caught me staring and frowned. He said something to Enzo and the two knuckleheads joined the rest of us. This time, Dante narrowed his eyes at our brothers. What's up with the two of you? You've been gossiping like a couple of old ladies at Sunday Mass since we left the marina. Thankful to have the attention off me, I sat back to enjoy the sun. Enzo nodded in my direction. Something you want to tell us? About? He and Gabe exchanged glances, and I knew. Shauna and Maggie hadn't kept mine and Dahlia's secret. Not that the revelation surprised me. Maggie had looked downright shell-shocked when she'd left the condo. Shauna, on the other hand, had grinned like she knew the winning lotto numbers. Fine, yes, I have something to tell you. I took a swig of my beer. You're all a bunch of pains in my ass. Enzo folded his arms and rocked back on his heels. Very funny. Now spill it. I opened my mouth to tell him to go to hell, but a reel howled from the aft side of the boat before I had the chance. Grab it. He stared as if I'd spoken in Swahili. Marco darted toward the sound. I motioned to the bowed rod. This is a fishing trip. You have a fish. I'm on it. Gabe moved quicker than someone who'd consumed his body weight in beer should have been able to and shouldered Marco out of the way. The big jerk gripped the pole with both hands and yanked it hard enough to snap the line. Turning to Enzo, I said, Gabe sucks at this. You might want to go help. Damn it. This conversation isn't over. He hurried away. Good freaking riddance. Dante plopped down beside me and pulled out his phone. What was that about? Who knows? How's the signal? I hadn't checked my messages since the previous evening. Although I knew Dahlia was safe in Stuart's capable hands, I had an overwhelming urge to hear her voice. He hitched a shoulder. Set come, it works great. When it works. The show on the other side of the deck kept me entertained while waiting for my cell to power on. Great job setting the hook, Gabe. I added every bit of admiration I could muster to my voice. The more I sucked up, stroked egos, and smiled, the less likely they'd be to bust my balls about Gunner. Gabe flipped me the finger. Shaking my head, I scrolled through my messages. Six from Julia Carpenter to call her. Seems she had breaking news on Meriwether. The last message referred me to a website. I clicked the link and waited for the gossip rag article to load. Holy shit. Dante sat upright without taking his eyes off his phone. Uh, Leo? I think you have a problem, man. What? My first thought was something happened to Dahlia and Gunner. Dante shoved his phone in my face. He'd loaded the same webpage that Julia had sent me. My brain misfired. 
What the fuck? He's yours, right? Dante squinted. Yeah, he's mine. However, the internet claimed Harrison fucking Merriweather was Gunner's biological father. The reporters had gone so far as to include a photograph of the lying SOB with my son and Dahlia. Dante lowered his voice. One look at the kid, and I knew he was a Marchione. I tore my gaze from the phone. Why didn't you say anything when you dropped off the tree and fish? He shrugged. I figured you'd tell me when you were ready. Leo, a little help over here. Gabe planted the rod against his navel. Bad move, unless he wanted to lose a testicle or two when it slipped, and it would slip. Enzo, help Gabe, he needs a fighting belt, I shouted, but he and Marco had disappeared, likely to find more beer. Christ. I hurried behind Gabe to fasten the contraption around his waist. However, I would have had an easier time dressing Gunner in a vinyl suit covered with baking grease. Hold still, I'm trying. He twisted at the same time the fish tugged and nearly lost his footing. Son of a bitch, Dante peered at us. What the hell is that thing? It's a gut bucket. I held up the belt and motion of the cup mounted on the plastic plate. The rod goes in the butt pad. It gives you leverage and helps with fatigue. Dante cracked up. Gabe knows all about shoving his rod in padded butts. At some point during the commotion, Enzo and Marco had returned. My idiot brothers roared in laughter and tossed around phrases like double bubble, badonka donk, and cushion for the pushin. Leave my wife's ass out of it, Gabe ground his teeth. Normally, I'd laugh along with them, but I had more important things on my mind. Things like planning a homicide. Put the damn thing on me. He made a considerable effort to remain still. I fastened the belt around Gabe's waist. It looks like a strap-on, Marco snickered. Gabe heaved the pole back and reeled as if his life depended on it. Thanks, Leo. The rest of you can fuck off. I need to make a call. I figured I had five, maybe ten minutes of man versus fish before he'd give up and spelled off the reel to me or one of our brothers. Ignoring them, I walked into the cabin and dialed Dahlia. The call went straight to voicemail. I scrolled through my contacts and called Stuart next. Leo, did you get my text? He sounded as frustrated as I felt. No. Damn satellite communications. The system had cost a fortune. What's up? Where's Dahlia? I need to speak to her. She had me take her to Baton Rouge. He grumbled something under his breath. Listen, she got a package this morning. She wouldn't let me see it, but whatever it was upset her. What do you mean? She wouldn't let you... I pinched the bridge of my nose and forced myself to calm down. You're right. She's a guest, not a prisoner. Did you catch the return address? There wasn't one, and the box wasn't postmarked. I found it outside the condo door shortly after you left. I tightened my grip on the phone. You're telling me someone got into the building? Yes, he sighed. I would have missed it if the dogs hadn't gone apeshit. Another fucking coincidence involving the stalker and Harrison Merriweather. A package the day the fake news breaks about Gunner? Bullshit. Like I said, Dahlia was upset and asked me to take her to the governor's mansion. She's been inside for a half hour. Memories of how she'd reacted the night someone had broken into her house flooded me. She damn near had a panic attack when I told her I'd go to her place and pick up a few things. Receiving a package at the condo must have freaked her the hell out. I promised to keep them safe, and here I am in the middle of the ocean. Leo, are you there? Stuart snapped me back to the present. Yeah, I'm here. Did she, did she take anything with her? Suitcases, bags? I didn't want the answer, but I needed to know if she'd left me. Just a purse and a bag for the little guy. He seemed to catch on to my train of thought. She said she was having brunch with her father, sir. She had me wait in town. Thank God, I sagged against the bar. Do you know if she happened to be on her phone this morning? Not that I'm aware of, but she did spend some time by herself in the bedroom. Like I said, she was troubled. I had no way of knowing if she'd seen the article, but I'd bet my right arm her father had. Listen, there's some bullshit in the media today. Chances are, she's going to be even more upset when you see her again. I'll stay close and help her with your... with Gunner. Does everyone know he's mine? Thanks. I glanced out the window at my brothers. Tell her I'll be back as soon as I can. Tell her... Tell her I said everything's going to be all right. I'm in this with her. He cleared his throat. Wouldn't it be best if you called her? Yes, thank you, Captain Obvious. She's not answering her phone and the SATCOM has hit or miss on the boat. Will do. 
Oh, and you might want to pick up another goldfish on your way back. Dare I ask what happened to the first one? Stuart sighed. Gunner decided to use it as a teddy bear. So much for my play day with my brothers. Chapter 21 Dahlia There you are. My father flashed me a million watt smile. Why are you sitting in the dark? Did you have anything to do with the article in the paper? I don't know what possessed me to ask. Leaking that sort of garbage wasn't his style. However, I wouldn't put it past Robert to make a statement about the stalker and hint that Leah was involved. His face fell. I'd hoped you wouldn't see it until we'd had a chance to talk. My mouth moved, but nothing came out. He might as well have punched me in the stomach. It would have hurt less. Robert spoke with Harry. It was their idea. Since you're engaged now, they thought it would solve a lot of problems. He shoved his hands in his designer slacks. I don't see how lies solve anything. Actually, it might have put me and Gunner in danger. I stood and forced him to look up an inch or two to meet my gaze. The stalker is getting more desperate. He found me at Leo's and took pictures from outside the sliding glass door. I don't understand. What does Harrison claiming Gunner as his son have to do with Leo Marchione? His eyes widened. What in the Sam hell were you doing at that man's house? Does Harry know? The room tilted. What are you talking about? The news article. My dad frowned. Holding up my hands, I took a step back. Harry told the world Gunner was his? He wouldn't, would he? I couldn't imagine Harrison going to the media and lying about being the father of another man's child. Then again, I never thought he'd beat his wife or hurt women he dated. And the conversation we'd had? I'd believed his lies. The press release went out late last night. The color drained from my father's face. What article are you referring to? Shauna called to tell me about a story that ran yesterday about the stalker. They alluded that Leo was a suspect. Now, answer my question. Some reporter contacted Harry asking how he felt about you having a child with Leo. Harry and Robert thought if they gave the press a love story, the press would lay off the Marchione angle. I can't believe this. I'd suggested the same thing to Robert, only I'd planned to tell the truth. He glared. I never would have agreed to it had I known you were lying to me about your relationship with Leo Marchione. He's a criminal. I'm not the one who's been lying to you. I have never stayed the night at Harrison's place, let alone moved in, nor have he and I had sex. Never? No. If you must know, the only man I have ever been with is Leo. It was my father's turn to gape. That's right, Dad. The man you chose for me to marry has been feeding you a steady diet of bullcrap. I'm sure he had his reasons. The stress of the previous few days caught up to me. The fear, the helplessness, the anger. All of it boiled up and came out of my mouth. I'll tell you his reason. He's an entitled bastard who can't take no for an answer. You want to talk about a criminal. What about Harrison? He beat his wife so severely she was hospitalized. And that's not all. A handful of women have accused him of stalking and worse. Last time I checked, rape was illegal. That's enough. Robert Becker stepped forward and ran his hand from the back of my father's head to his shoulder, tenderly. He leaned into the touch before he caught himself and stiffened. What the hell? How dare you speak to your father in that tone? Robert clasped his hands behind his back and pointedly avoided making eye contact with his employer. 
My mind spun like a carnival ride. How many times had I walked in on their hushed conversations? Questioned the need for Robert to spend so much time in our home. Overheard my mother crying about their sham of a marriage. Harry's comment came back to me. We aren't your parents. I'm not asking you to live a lie. That's it. I've officially lost my mind. There's no way my dad and Robert Becker are romantically involved. Dad glanced from me to Robert. Are any of these accusations true? You know how these things happen. Most of the women threatened to go to the press when Harrison ran for the state senate. They changed their tunes when he refused to pay them off. Robert rolled his eyes. As for the ex, Mrs. Merriweather, you of all people know that every story has two sides. Bile rose in my throat. What a complete crock of shit. Before we got off the topic of Harrison, I decided to lay it all out there. Dad, have you heard anything from the private investigator looking for my stalker? My father glanced at Robert, who shook his head. Nothing? I couldn't imagine the guy had been working on the case for a year and hadn't turned up anything. I believe Harry is behind it all. Robert scoffed. You think Harrison Merriweather broke into your home? No, but he could have paid someone to do it. My father's eyes widened. Dahlia, I'm as shocked as you are to learn about his past, but I highly doubt Harry had anything to do with it. I didn't need to win the argument. I'd planted the seed. That was enough. Regardless, you should know I've hired my own PI and plan to go to the police with everything if the harassment doesn't stop. You're going to ruin this family. Robert turned an odd shade of magenta. This family? Don't you mean the campaign? I arched an eyebrow. He rounded on me with his hands balled at his sides. Enough. My dad rubbed the center of his chest. Ignoring Robert altogether, I knelt in front of my father and took his hand. I apologize for losing my temper. Maybe I'm wrong about Harrison's involvement with the stalking, but Leo is Gunner's father. I won't allow anyone to take that away from him, not even for you. Robert scoffed. Waylon, you must put a stop to this. It'll ruin everything we've worked for. Think about the campaign, the White House. My father glanced between us and sighed. He's right, Dahlia. I'm sorry, but you have to end things with Leah once and for all. No. I don't know what he saw in my expression, but his shoulders sagged ever so slightly. You're still in love with him. He spoke as if stating a simple fact, like the sky was blue or the sun would rise. Of course she is, my mother walked into the room. I've been trying to tell you that for years. She has? I wasn't aware my mom had paid enough attention to notice. Robert gave my mother a look that would have made Attila the Hun cringe. She pretended to ignore him, but the glass in her hand trembled. She's afraid of him? My father sighed. Dahlia, is this true? Yes, I'm in love with Leo. It felt incredible to admit my feelings without preamble or guilt. However, I'd had this argument with him so many times, I knew what came next. And before you say it, he's not a mafioso. Leo owns a hotel and restaurant. His family risked their lives to break ties with the old world. I'm aware. I've made it my business to keep tabs on the Marchionis. He tilted his head. Does he treat you well? I'm not hearing this. Waylon, think about what this will do to the campaign. Robert marched around the settee. You're not seriously going to allow this to stand. This doesn't concern you. He nodded to the door. We'll talk about what you did and did not know about Harrison Merriweather and why you insisted on that damned article later. 
Robert gawked for half a second before storming out of the room. My father turned his attention back to me. Is what you said about Harry true? Nodding, I said. I'm surprised you didn't know. Robert does background checks on all of my friends. My mother choked on her martini. Glad I'm not the only one he keeps tabs on. He glanced between us. While I don't condone such a thing, Rob does what he does to protect mine and this family's reputation. On that note, I'm leaving. Mom set her empty glass on the antique credenza. The food is getting cold. He waited until she flounced out of the room and turned his attention back to me. Don't worry about Robert. I'll talk him down from his bell tower before he does any more damage. Thank you. How are things between you and Mom? I don't know why I asked. It was obvious the tension between them had gotten worse. She asked for a divorce. Again. I wish I could say I'm surprised. Growing up, I'd heard the D word on a monthly basis, if not more. I hadn't understood why they'd never gone through with it until I was a teenager. My father had told me in no uncertain terms the American people weren't ready for another divorcee in the White House. They'd given Ronald Reagan a pass because he was an actor. We hadn't discussed the politics of ending a marriage since Trump had taken the White House, but I didn't get the feeling my father had changed his stance. I don't think she wants to leave me. If she did, she would have filed the papers long ago. I'd heard this all before. You could file and put you both out of your misery. He drew a deep breath. You were too young to remember, but I did just that 25 years ago. This was news to me. And? And she changed her mind, begged me to stay. He stared at his hands. Robert convinced me to drop the petition. Freaking Robert. I'd never understood why he hadn't run for office himself. Between you and me, I'm beginning to wonder if the presidency is worth the aggravation. He smiled the first real smile I'd seen from him in what felt like years. Enough of that. Does Leo make you happy? So much. And you should see him with Gunner. They're my world. Then I'm happy for you. He brushed my hair back from my face and kissed my forehead. Don't base your life on my career. Thanks, Dad. You don't know what it means to me to hear you say that. But who are you and what have you done with my father? I poked his side. I'd expected him to laugh or at least smile, but he did neither. I'm serious, Dahlia. If my voters have a problem with two people in love, then I don't want their support. Gunner deserves to be raised by two parents who love each other. I'm sorry you never had that. The regret in his voice broke my heart. I wanted to tell him it was okay. He'd done his best in a bad situation. That I was certain my mother had been lovely when they'd first married, but I couldn't. Would you be terribly upset if Gunner and I spent Christmas with Leo's family? He dipped his chin, sucked in a breath, and nodded. It won't be the same here without you, but I understand this may be Gunner's only opportunity to spend the holidays with his other grandfather. The thought made my eyes sting. Papa Joe Marchione wasn't my favorite person, but he was the sort of man who could make you look past his shortcomings with a wink and a smile. Leo came by his charm honestly. I'll tell your mother and Robert after you leave. No sense in causing another scene. He motioned to the door. Come, breakfast is getting cold. I stood and wiped my eyes. Go ahead, I need to wash up. He gave me a bone-crushing hug and headed in the opposite direction as Robert had gone. Well, wonders never cease. I'd somehow gotten my father's blessing to do what came as naturally to me as breathing. Love, Leo. 
I felt as if I were walking on the clouds, which was why I didn't hear Robert approaching until he grabbed my arm and spun me to face him. Let go of me? I tried to break free, but he tightened his grip and pressed closer. I won't let you destroy Waylon. One way or another, this thing between you and Marchione is over. He shoved me away from him and stormed off. Dumbstruck, I wiped his spit from my cheek. Chapter 22, Leo. Sweat poured down Gabe's face, and he raised his hand to wipe his brow. Of course, the fish chose that precise moment to run deep. Whatever he had on the line had more brains than its opponent. The little progress he'd made, bringing the monster in, went out along with the line. You've always had a hard time closing the deal? Marco chuckled and held up his beer. I'm too drunk for this shit. Someone take over. Gabe glanced over his shoulder, but our brothers were too busy harassing each other. Dante said, I thought Enzo was the one who couldn't seal the deal with Shauna. This from the guy who hasn't had his first date? Enzo hiked his thumb at Dante. I sealed it enough to put a ring on her finger and a bun in her oven. I date? Gabe growled. Shut the hell up and one of you take the rod. I shouted loud enough for all four of them to hear me. I hate to cut the party short, but I need to be back in New Orleans, pronto. Not until we bring this bad boy in, Gabe said through gritted teeth. My palms itched to get a crack at the fish, but I needed to have the captain turn the boat around. I'm serious. We have to go back. All you got a package from the stalker at my place. Stuart still with her? Enzo asked. Big surprise. He hadn't stopped giving me the evil eye since I'd blown off his question and answer session. Yeah, he is. But there's a shitstorm brewing, and I need to be there. Dante shoved to his feet. I'll tell the captain to head in. Gabe can reel it in on the way back just as easily as you can while the boat's running in circles. Great. Now, would someone take over? Gabe pleaded. Anyone? Evidently, the sun and the alcohol had dimmed my brother's enthusiasm. Four hours in the middle of the ocean could do that to a man. Marco and Enzo exchanged glances, but neither made a move. Despite my foul mood, or maybe because of it, a grin tugged at the corners of my mouth. I couldn't help but tease them. After all, they'd given me nonstop grief. Come on, what will your wives say when you tell them all you caught were sunburns and hangovers? They stared with equal degrees of drunken haze and consideration. Take the damn pole, or I'm throwing it in the ocean. Gabe had turned a rather unhealthy shade of red from the exertion. On your left. I buckled a gut bucket around my waist, eased to a side, and took the rod. He heaved out a sigh and a slew of curses. It's all you. I'm done. Okay, but I'll need you to hook it once I bring it to the surface. I leaned back and reeled until the rod nearly bent in half, then pushed forward, keeping the tip up. Over and over, back and forth, I danced with the fish on the other end of the line. The tango reminded me a bit of the situation with Dahlia. I could heavy-handed and risk losing her, or I could finesse her until I wore her down. Enzo took advantage of my being stuck in one place to harass me again. You might as well admit it. Gunner's your son, isn't he? Yeah, he's mine. When no one reacted, I glanced back. My brothers stood shoulder to shoulder, staring, although none seemed all that surprised. And you're just now telling us about it? Why? Gabe shook his head. I thought it was a possibility way back when, but you denied it when I asked outright. Enzo said, It wasn't just him. Dolly has been lying to Maggie and Shauna for years. Still struggling with the fish, I said, we lied and have regretted it, but it was necessary. Dahlia and I found out she was pregnant a month before Joe and Rebecca were murdered. Someone sucked in a breath. Dante rested his hand on my shoulder. That sucks, bro. But what are you going to do about the article? What article? Marco asked. I jerked the rod back and accidentally landed an elbow on Dante's gut. Sorry about that. You might want to move over and keep your mouth shut. Dante didn't take the hint. If anything, he decided to hit me back where it hurt. I'll show you. Five minutes later, they'd all read the story of Harrison and Dahlia's fictitious relationship. How the couple had been together years before and had broken up. How the two had reconciled and planned to be a family. My brothers lined the railing, splitting their attention between me and the water. Gabe spoke first. This is some serious bullshit. What are you going to do about this? Marco asked. Not for nothing, but you'd better tell Ma about the kid before she gets wind of it from someone else. 
Enzo said. Times like these, I wished I was an only child. I don't know, and I'll tell Ma when I'm damn well ready. The line went slack and the guy shouted. They'd evidently caught sight of the monster. It's huge, Dante gasped. I swear it's a marlin. Can't be, they run in the summer. Gabe leaned over the railing. The catch ran deep, turned and burst from the surface in all its glory. A sailfish, a freaking sailfish. If that isn't a sign, I don't know what is. I couldn't believe it. We'd used the wrong rigging, the wrong bait, and it was the wrong time of the year, and we're in the wrong spot. Still, we'd managed to hook the holy grail of sport fishing. Once again, the situation reminded me of Dahlia. The circumstances were all wrong, but we were so freaking right. My muscles screamed in protest, but the adrenaline flooding my bloodstream urged me on. A flash of color beneath the water caught my attention. I almost had it. Get the gaff ready. Easy on the run, or you'll end up making a bird's nest of the line. Enzo eased alongside of me. I got this. Imagining the fish beneath the surface strategizing its escape made my pulse race. And then the line went slack. He was a worthy opponent, to be sure. You lost him. Enzo gave me a half smirk, half frown. Tighten the line fast. He's heading for the boat, Dante shouted. I shook my head and moved to set the rod down. Bullshit, they don't. The fish sailed into the air a few yards from us. Its beauty stole my breath. The long silver body glistened beneath the onyx-colored fan of its dorsal fin. I damn near dropped the rod. Real. Gabe leaned over the railing. I need that gaff. I turned the crank with every ounce of strength I could muster. The line snapped. Son of a bitch. I slammed the pole into the mount. Gabe, never one to let sleeping dogs lie or lost fish swim, turned to me. When do we get to meet our nephew? Now? He's going to do this now? I bent at the waist and rested my hands on my thighs. Looks like none of us can close a deal, Enzo chuckled. The bastard. He's already got the girl. All he has to do is reel her in. Marco wiggled his brows. Gabe deadpanned. Let's just hope the line doesn't snap. Are you four done yet? I glared up at them. They have a kid together. She'll come around. Dante laughed. Wait until you see Gunner. He is Leo's mini-me. He's right. Even the reporters outside the condo commented on the resemblance. Dante, you're a genius. They stood upright. All I needed to do was convince Dahlia to make a statement with me and Gunner by her side. There was no way anyone could miss the fact he's mine. And if they do? Enzo asked. A paternity test would end any speculation. Gabe spoke from experience on that one. I freaking love this plan. Harrison fucking Merriweather will be crucified in the court of public opinion. Enzo scratched his jaw. Will Dahlia do that? I mean, this could easily turn against her if the press thinks she doesn't know who knocked her up. Damn it. Gabe nodded slowly. Be very careful how you handle this. And then there's the stalker. This from Dante, who up until that moment, I thought was on my side. So what do I do? I resisted the urge to kick the side of the boat. With my luck, I'd end up with broken bones and a permanent limp. Dante clamped a hand on my shoulder. Simple. You convince Harrison Merriweather to admit he lied. Enzo motioned to the crystal blue water. He'd have a better chance of jumping in and catching that fish with his bare hands. Maybe. Maybe not. Chapter 23, Dahlia. Though it had been freshman year of college when I took Psychology 101, I'd never forgotten Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The bottom layer of the rainbow-colored triangular diagram contained things like air, food, water, shelter, and sex. The next layer consisted of safety and security. Maslow's theory went something like, Humans couldn't reach higher sections of the pyramid until they mastered the lower levels. After leaving the governor's mansion, I realized I was bouncing back and forth between the lower two levels like a freaking pinball. I had the basics covered. I mean, I did have a physical roof over my head. Gunner and I weren't sleeping on the streets. Were those roofs safe and secure? Not so much. 
The stalker had robbed me of any sense of well-being in my own home and at Leo's. Until I managed to put an end to the fear, I would never move to the next level. Belonging and love. Try as I might, I couldn't remember the labels of the top two layers of the pyramid. I blamed Leo for that. We'd taken Psych 101 together. While studying, we'd never gotten past the fact that Maslow had put sex on the bottom level. Leo had insisted he couldn't possibly learn until we'd satisfied our basic needs. His seduction attempts hadn't worked. At least, not until junior year. I rested my head against the seat and closed my eyes. Memories of mine and Leo's early relationship flooded me. I had been drawn to his quick smile and quicker wit. He hadn't taken anything seriously back then. Everything was one huge party, and Leo Marchione breathed life into it. He'd changed over the years. We both had. But something inside Leo had died along with his brother. His youth? His innocence? Maybe becoming a father had forced him to grow up? I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I'd missed the old Leo. I'd caught glimpses of him while dancing on the rooftop and making love on the couch, but it was fleeting. Even during sex, he'd seemed guarded. Gunner definitely brought out his father's inner goofball, as did the poodles. If only I could do the same. Dahlia, we've arrived. Stuart stopped the SUV in the alley behind Leo's building. Stay put while I check the perimeter and condo. You'll be safe here. The idea of sitting in the vehicle without protection made my palms sweat. You're leaving us alone? I don't see any paparazzi, but I want to be sure there are no surprises. He reached for the door handle. Wait, I don't care about the reporters. I doubted they could print anything worse about me than they already had. However, I did worry about the stalker. He could be lying in wait until Gunner and I were alone. I understand, but I'd rather you not get out until I know it's safe. I met his gaze in the rearview mirror. Park here and walk us inside through the back door. He nodded toward the towaway zone sign and frowned. It'll take five minutes tops. My voice rose high enough to wake Gunner. Please. Mama, I gotta pee. He rubbed his eyes. In the big boy potty. Great. He picks now to show interest in potty training. I have to use the restroom too. I offered Stuart's reflection a weak smile. Stuart turned to face me. We go in through the back door, straight to the condo. Once we're inside, you will wait by the door while I do a quick sweep. Got it? I nodded. Keep him in your arms. He reached for the handle again. Okay. I waited for Stuart to exit the vehicle before I opened my door and motioned for Gunner to come closer. The little guy stared for several heartbeats before scrambling into my arms. You said? No, baby, we're playing a game. If we do what Stuart says, we'll win a prize. I held him tight and followed the bodyguard through the back door, down the narrow hall, and into the elevator. The doors slid open on the fourth floor, but Stuart signaled for me to wait while he scanned the area outside Leo's condo. It's clear. My heart pounded and my mouth went dry. In all the years I'd spent around the Marchionis, I'd never experienced anything like this. The closest I'd come was watching action movies with Leo. Stuart jammed the key into the door, pushed inside, and raised his hand to enter the security code. His finger hovering over the panel, he turned to me. Did you set this when we left? Wasn't making sure the alarm was set his job? I think so. In all honesty, I couldn't remember if I had or hadn't. Maybe? Fifi, Cupcake, and Eugene came out of the bathroom and circled my feet. His shoulders tensed. I know I put them in their crates. I let the dogs out. Gunner sung the song complete with woofs. Between the tension and the pint-sized comedian, I giggled. 
Stuart gave me a look that had me feeling like a scolded child. Wait here. Sure, no problem. Gunner turned and watched the huge man stalk further inside. I gotta pee. Hold it one more minute. Remember, we have to do what Stuart says. The mention of peeing made me all too aware of my full bladder. If the bodyguard didn't hurry, Gunner and I would both need a change of clothes. Stuart moved from the kitchen to the master. It's bad, really bad. Gunner squirmed in my arms. I hear you, baby, loud and clear. Hey, Stuart, we have an emergency potty situation out here. Almost done. To save time, I removed Gunner's miniature Chuck Taylor high tops. He continued stomping around without bothering to respond. Screw this. I hurried down the hall to the guest bath, stripped Gunner from the waist down, and set him on the little potty chair. The wonderful sound of urine hitting plastic filled the room. I would have jumped for joy, but I had to pee too bad to risk it. I locked the door, lifted my skirt, and followed Gunner's lead. The toddler burst out laughing. You pee too? Uh-huh. I'd read every book on potty training ever written, but I couldn't recall any advice for this particular situation. When you gotta go, you gotta go. He cocked his head to the side and stared. Let me see. Thankfully, Stuart chose that moment to knock. The condo is clear. I'm going downstairs to move the SUV. Stay inside. Okay. I wanted to tell him to take the rest of the day off. The idea of having a babysitter, especially a grouchy one, made me antsy. However, the idea of being alone with a roof-hopping stalker on the loose was worse. Move, Mama, I see. Gunner nudged my thigh. Standing to give him a view of the bowl, I took advantage of his momentary distraction to pull up my panties. Wash your hands. My child rolled his eyes and climbed onto the stool Leo had placed in front of the sink. The poodles scratched and whined at the bathroom door. Gunner jumped down and let them in while I was cleaning up. The dogs made a beeline for the ginormous shower. They whined and barked and jumped as if trying to get inside, or trying to get to something inside. Before I could make sense of what was happening, the frosted glass door opened and a man poked his head out. He took a step forward and tripped over a dog. I would have expected a stalker to kick it out of his way, but he hopped around to avoid crushing the little beasts, stumbled, and fell to his knees. I jumped back to get away from him, but that put me farther from my son. Gunner? Mama? His voice hit a pitch only dogs could hear. Speaking of dogs, the poodles attacked the guy on the floor, with kisses. Lock yourself in your room, go. I waited until he disappeared from the doorway to search the countertop for anything I could use as a weapon. Please. The guy held up his hands. I didn't mean to scare you. I called, I sent notes, but no one would listen. I grabbed the soap dispenser. It wasn't much, but it was marble and heavy and would hurt if I smashed it against his skull. His eyes widened. I only wanted my family back. Leo, he stole them from me. Look, you sick bastard. I widened my stance in case he came at me. Leo didn't steal anything from you. We were never yours to begin with. The guy pulled his chin back and pursed his lips. The overall effect made him look more like a turtle than a psychopath. We? You've terrorized me for months, but I'm done being afraid of you. My plan was to keep him talking long enough for Stuart to return. Although once I got a good look at him, I thought I could take him in a fight. He was tall and wiry and had a nose that looked like it never stopped running. The guy eased toward the door. Look, lady, I don't know what you're talking about. Stay where you are. I couldn't let him leave. Not with Gunner out there somewhere. His hands shot higher into the air. The damn poodles continued to jump up around the stalker as if they wanted him to pick them up. I don't want any trouble. His voice cracked. You should have thought of that before lurking around outside. I was desperate. 
Leo refused to give them back and stopped taking my calls. Them? I glanced from his sweaty face to the dogs and my heart sank. What's your name? Artie, Artie Guzman, and these are my babies. I lowered the soap dispenser and sagged against the wall. And you thought it was a good idea to break into the condo? I didn't mean to, the door was unlocked. I couldn't believe this guy. So you accidentally let yourself in? I heard my babies inside and- Artie knelt to pet the dogs. I had a lapse in judgment. Male laughter echoed from the front room. Leo had returned, but I couldn't tell who he'd brought with him. Daddy! Gunner's little feet slapped on the hardwood floors. What's wrong, buddy? Leo asked. Mama scared me. Gunner stopped crying for half a second. Who are you? I'm your Uncle Gabe. Gabe. The color drained from Artie's face. You have to help me. He'll kill me if he finds me here. Doll, you there? Leo alternated between calling for me and talking to the child. Dahlia? I wove my way around three excited poodles and one terrified man. I'll talk to them. Stay here. This has been part two of Hot Mimosa, Bourbon Street Bad Boys Club, book four. Written by Catherine M. Hurst. Narrated by Ava Lucas and Aaron Shedlock. Be sure to stay tuned for the conclusion. If you enjoyed this audiobook, please subscribe to Catherine's channel where you can find more of her contemporary and paranormal romance novels.